Memphis today because they'll call that traveling. This is the U.S. Open Championships for USA Basketball, part of the NCAA College Basketball Academy. This is the 15U Championship, or the ninth grade championship that is game elite that you see on your screen pro skills this pro skills program is out of texas game elite is out of georgia my name is greg rakestraw joined by pete smith moments away from tip off pete your expectations as to the level of talent level of play that we'll see in this national championship game well this this whole building in the memphis sport and event center has abundance of talents congratulations to both these teams for making this championship game this should be a real up and down game. Obviously, we'll go through the rules as we get going here, but uh, some really talented kids with Division I offers that are already only 15 years old. Very similar to college rules, but it is a high school length of game. So instead of four eight-minute quarters, we will play two 16-minute halves. Four timeouts available for each of these teams, but here we go. We are playing with a 30-second shot clock. Each of these teams have played six times to get to this point. 24 teams play in the event, 16 games, 16 teams in the championship bracket. So each of these teams have won three times in the championship bracket. And the foul that goes against Game Elite, that is Mustafa Diop. And he will be the most lengthiest of players. Listed at 6'8", frankly, I think he may be one of the few kids who has maybe grown since his program height was listed. Looks taller than that. So Marcellus Jackson Jr. at the free throw line for Pro Skills goes by Cello, misses his first of two free throws. He actually plays in this area for this team that is based out of Texas. He is from Marion, Arkansas, which is just across the state line, and attends First Assembly Christian School. Goes 0 for 2 in his opening trip to the free throw line. Rebound belongs to Game Elite. That was Devin Hutcherson that pulled down the board. He got an offer from Ole Miss yesterday. Straight man-to-man -man defense by both teams to start out with. Trying to get the ball in the post, obviously. Diop, beautiful spin move. Mustafa Diop, he attends Walker High School in Marietta, Georgia, and he has the game's first two. You know, my, my experience, Greg, is the teams that get these championship games normally are extremely well coached. It's not just all talent. They've got a good scheme and a good plan. Good job to attack the zone. The runner is up and good for pro skills. That is Cameron Lomax. He is from McKinney, Texas. He attends Heritage High School. Also a football player. And Lomax, again, just going to be a high school sophomore. Already has an offer from UNLV. So tied at two here in the early going. Good inside out by Diop. Shot clock is at 10. Ball knocked away. Turnover. Committed by Game Elite, their first. Good hustle by Game Elite, but not able to save it. Well, the quickness is just incredible, these guards. Not very tall teams. We This is the third day of competition here in Memphis. So, you know, you, you think a little bit of fatigue may be coming in, but the quickness right now, obviously the first three minutes of this game has just been tremendous. Seven Spurlock with the hustle for Game Elite. He's a young man that's sitting on an offer from Missouri and Nebraska heading into his sophomore year. So a couple of minutes in, and we're tied at two. Pull from the elbow, foul that time. Shot was taken and missed. That is Kevin Savage, the third, that will shoot the free throws. Savage is a year younger than most of his compadres. He will be a high school freshman coming up this year. Well, he, he looks very young compared to the other guys. His skill level, though, is extremely well. It's amazing that the names of these teams, elite, skill, you know, as we're, we're seeing these two teams play against each other. I mean, these are the best in their areas and their part of the states. A lot of these teams cross over state-wise. You've got kids from other states that play in another state with an AAU squad like this. Kevin Savage the third from Noonan, Georgia, which is the southwest side of Atlanta, connects on the second free throw. And Game Elite, again, they are wearing the orange. They lead this 15U championship early by a score of 3-2. Five out, no post players, no post presence right now for Pro Elite. Modern basketball, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> Three-point shot does not go. There's and a push off, yeah. yeah foul in the back. <laughs> and, and you can tell with this, and again, you'll see a, a little more size as we get to the 16U level, not surprisingly. But the tallest player listed on the Pro Skills roster is 6'7", 
And again, I think Diop may have literally grown since the last time he was measured because he looks a whole lot bigger than 6'8 on the floor. Marcelo Jackson, who has committed the foul, pushing the back on the shot up. Here's Diop on the wing. Good double, good double. Got him rattled. But it led to a wing three that does not go. Hutcherson with the rebound, left it short. Rose skills with it now. On the drive, flying down the floor, and Diop pins it to the back backboard. Three on two break. Good spreading to the court, but a turnover. So now a 3v1, and again, Diop just kind of playing center field. Did a good job of going straight up, but Cello Jackson gets the bucket to go. Cello Jackson plays fearless. I mean, going against Diop, did not back down at all. He's going to either get fouled or make the basket. Jackson has offers Ooh. from Tennessee Tech, Radford, Arkansas, Little Rock, amongst others. Spot up three is good. That is Kevin White. He is from Covington, Georgia, attends Newton High School. Yeah, you said a modern basketball. Throw it to the corner, reject the ball screen, take a ball screen. Nice take again by Cello Jackson. So Jackson back-to-back -back buckets to tie us at six here in the early going. And we're playing two 16-minute halves in today's game. And because this is the championship game, there is quickly a crowd that is building around this court here in the south end of Memphis. Shot taken and missed, rebound by MJ Hayes. McKinney, Texas is home. Jackson going right at Diop. Follow-up does not go. Hutcherson will be fouled. That foul will go against Marcellus Jackson. First substitution about to check in. Deontay Graybear will be entering for pro skills. He is from Frisco, Texas. Attends Emerson High School. Eight dressed for the game for both teams. Which Lock. is about yeah. you, what you see in most AAU rosters. Yeah. You're capped at 10 for this event. Just watch the Minnesota team with Iowa and Minnesota kids that had 10. But overall, eight's a great number. Good back screen on the weak side. Great find by the big as well. The bucket is good by Devin Hutcherson. Love that play on the weak side. The action there was great. Opened it up. We may get a chance to see a little bit later. But love that being a former high school coach. So 8-6 for game elite. Spot up three. No Hutcherson. Does a good job of fending off. The rebound attempt from Seven Spurlock. Up and under, tough size to deal with from Spurlock, who is six foot four. The hustle by Kevin Savage, the third, but couldn't keep it in the field of play. Throw in coming here for Pro Skills. I think Game Elite wanted to do a little trap out of that. Out of bounds, play defensively, but they didn't quite get on the same page with everybody looking at their coach. On the drive, and good take by Seven <laughs> Spurlock. Plays at Frisco Memorial High School. Diop did everything right. Didn't want to foul, but he kept his arm up. Now we got, here's the 1 2 2 zone now. Played by Pro Skills. Spurlock becomes the third different player for Pro Skills to. Get to the scoring column here in this championship game. Savage lines up a three. Again, he is yet to be a high school freshman and knock that one down. He was licking his chops when he saw that zone. The zone is hard to play in this kind of basketball just because the shooting skills by so many of these guards are such a high level. On the drive, and that will be a block. And again, like I said, there's some kind of college rules. They have that semi semicircle. So that is the second defender, the primary defender. He can't be waiting there. Hence, it's a block and a bucket and one opportunity for Pro Skills and Cameron Lomax. A great take there. Had a good job trying to take the charge. I mean, a win-win. Again, I, I can't emphasize here early in the going, early in the going here, how well the skill level is of these guys for only being. 15 years and under. It's a national championship. Yeah. This is what you're going to get. Yeah, that, and this is the national championship. There's no wonder. Yep, you're spot on. Lomax also a football prospect as well. In addition to being an outstanding basketball player, he's got five. A little full court pickup here by Pro oh. Skills. And <laughs> almost lucky. led to a turnover. But now a break at the other end. Savage with a defender in his face could not finish. Good weak side glass by Graybear. Three on two at the other end. 
Kingston Willis, who had it for a moment, now has it back in his hand. Long three, no. Easy board for Diop. Now we'll see Prosco start to pick up full court on a regular basis. Yeah, even like. on misses, yeah. Got a piece of it on the shot. Will Saunders will check in next stoppage and play for Pro Skills. And they will get their entire eight-man roster some run here early. Foul called before the shot against Pro Skills. There you see split the trap defense. Got him on the reach there before he could give up the open three. Kind of saved the basket there, Greg. We're tied at 11. There you see Saunders who just checked in. Plays at Highland Park High School in Dallas. Corner three. Lomax, no. And Hutcherson, and already sitting on an SEC offer, gets the rebound. Good hands there by Pro Skills, but the loose change yeah. picked up by Diop, his second bucket. Right place at the right time. The game elite with a 13 to 11 lead. Game Elite in orange, Pro Skills in black and red. High ball screen, nothing comes from it. Good help side defense by both squads. Really been impressed with their defensive effort there. Little bunny hop got away with it. I was going to say, they're <laughs> going to say he was juggling it, so Willis the benefactor. His first bucket. See if Diop, Diop needs to get a touch here. I think that's what they're going to look for. Except Pro Skills defense forced them out of it. There's the up with a touch. They had the last touch, yeah. turnover. Too much of a touch. Game being played at a pretty quick clip so far. Yes, yes it is. And part of that is because you're seeing a little bit of zone. And, and games right. that, that where you play zone, you tend to have a few less fouls. And games tend to move a little quicker when that is the case. Yeah, and the full court pressure too. Game at least played all man in the half court here. Texas has been the team that's done a nice three there. That's Keontae Graybear that got it to go. That is the first three made by Prosco. They have seesawed back in front 16-13. Good back and forth in this 15U championship game. Triple team got it out of there. Spot up three is good. Nice. Good inside out game. Yeah. That is Coleman Landrew. First time we have called his name. That is the third made three to this juncture for Game Elite. Baseline drive, rim protector is there. Second line of defense by Jalen Humphrey. Humphrey with the block, but Game Elite turns it over. Let's tell you about Landrew that just got that Let's bucket for Game Elite as you watch, watch the, the block the second here. line, yeah, by Humphrey. Great. Boy, that ball was almost at the rim when he blocked it. Super defensive rotation there by Humphrey. Landry, who at that last bucket for Game Elite, had 24 points for Game Elite in their quarterfinal win. He has offers from Tennessee Tech, UAB, Virginia Tech, and Jacksonville State. Saunders the ball for Pro Skills. Jaden Lund in the defense for Game Elite. They give Diop a breather. Three is good. That is Kingston Willis, his second made field goal. Squares up on the catch. He's ready to shoot it when he gets it. Hutcherson, Saunders, good recovery. The save by Pro Skills, and now they will go from defense to offense. Now, we have said this now a couple different ways, even as the ball is turned over. Again, you have to remind yourself that these kids are 15. Because right. the skill set, the physique that you see, again, this is why these are the top young players in the nation that we are seeing in this contest. Well, this Georgia team you and I may have mentioned earlier lost two games early in this tournament. Right and still advanced to this championship game. The level of play, therefore, is just incredible by the, the level of these athletes here in our U.S. Open Championship. This Pro Skills team lost their opener to the Utah Prospects by 17. The leave block that will be out of bounds. We'll keep it right here. Block that time for Keontae Graybear as seven Spurlock will check back in. By the way, let's see if we can get Pro Skills get him a seven jersey. Your first name, seven. <laughs> Get him number seven next year. Just a quick thought. Nice double screen for the baseline shot for three. Savage's three does not go. Saunders with the pull down for Pro Skill. Nice play there, devised. I love seeing that being a former coach. I love seeing plays like that. This has really been a one possession game the entire yeah. way so far. A very even matchup. 
Shot left short. One and done that time on the trip down for Pro Skills. A little quick for my taste, but one of the rare bad shots I would say so far, Greg. It, teams have really been very patient and taking good shots. On the drive, Landrew, good body control to avoid contact. Still couldn't finish. Pro Skills gets up and down the floor quickly, the 84 feet. A couple of shots missed at the rim. Here comes Landrew right back at it for Game Elite. Running the floor, you always reward the big for running yeah. the floor. And free throws coming up for Game Elite. And to that point, run to the block. Run to the ball side block. And right there, he did a good job of that. Got rewarded with the basketball and drew the foul. I want to go back to something you said because, again, my partner, for those who don't know, coached Indiana High School basketball for 35 years, was a part of three different state championships in, in terms of coaching. You're talking about a quick shot. Is that a quick shot in a 30-second shot clock environment? Is there still <laughs> Seriously, is there still time to get a better one? There, in the there's 30 still time okay. to get a better one. When you've got that many skilled players around you quickness-wise, yes, I, I would say so. You know, I had never played in a shot clock situation until I coached in my first McDonald's All-American game. And uh, it does change your thinking a little bit, but a 30-second isn't too bad. It was a little bit quick that first one. Missed free throws a pair by Jaden London. Young man from Fairborn, Georgia, attends Arlington Christian High School. On the drive, oh. pretty scoop off the window. That's seven Spurlock. That was a left-handed finger roll going to your right. And the five-point lead by <laughs> Pro Skills is the largest, largest of the game yeah. for either side. High post ball screen, nothing there. Good defense by Saunders. I thought maybe he'd give up a little quickness there. He did a good job staying in front of the ball. Shot clock in single digits. It's on your screen. Just nowhere to go. Yeah, great defensive possession there by Pro Skills out of Texas. You know, game Elite kind of has you know taller fives. There's good length on the floor for Pro Skills right now. Good hustle to simply track it down. And MJ Hayes. Marticio is his full first name. Got that to go, and we have ourselves a timeout. We'll see the replay here. Hayes. Yeah, good step through. He's the sixth Pro Skills player to score in this contest already. He has an offer from the Trojans of Arkansas Little Rock, who just made the move to the Ohio Valley Conference a season ago. So a seven-point deficit now for Game Elite. Game Elite's coaches. Kevin Savage, Stephen Major, coaches for Pro Skills, Demetrius Alexander, and Chris Campbell. If you're on the game elite side of things, Pete, how do you get, I wouldn't say you're out of the game, you're only down by seven, maybe through the first half. What are you doing to try to whittle away at that lead before halftime? Well, about two possessions ago, I said I'd, I'd get Mustafa Diop a touch or two. You know, he's got four points so far and uh, hasn't really been involved too much in the offense. Been a lot of guard play. The one time he did get in the post, last time he kicked it out for a wide open three. So Kevin White drained it, I think it was, or maybe it was uh, Landrew drained it. So Fran McCaffrey amongst the coaches that are here <laughs> checking this one out. I told him to come over. <laughs> I'll explain Pete's relationship <laughs> to Franny at some point during the broadcast as well. Pete was over checking out his godson oh. playing Pete's or uh, Fran's son uh, a bit earlier. And with the foul, let's talk about this now. Fran McCaffrey, head coach at Iowa, your former roommate in your days together in South Bend. Yeah, lived together for three years uh, in his wedding, and he was at my wedding, but the son named Connor was born just right before. I can never forget Connor's birthday because it was five days before my wife and I got married, but uh, son Jack playing in the 16 and under category here. Here's we got Diop. See, that's good job. That's what you do out of the timeout. Get the ball to your potentially best player. Mustafa Diop, his third field goal. He's got six, and in what has been a very balanced scoring effort across the board, he's the leading scorer in this game so far. Deep three, and we are playing the longer yes. kind of collegiate yeah. three-point rules today. Which makes the three-point shooting so far all the more impressive. That is a two. At the high school level, that's a three. Doesn't matter if you don't hit it, it's a zero as Landrew misses oh. for about 20 feet. Nice read. But Landrew yeah. couldn't walk the tightrope. We give turnovers back and forth Ooh. and finish with the flush. The dunk for MJ Hayes. He's got four. Well, he got off the floor so fast, too. So back to a seven-point lead for Pro Skills. Again, they're in the black and red. They're out of the state of Texas. 
Game elite out of Atlanta. Shot blocked. Ooh. Pro skills. Josekin goes defense to offense. No dunk this time, but an and one as Hayes gets the bucket. And now all of a sudden, Pete, yeah, the free throw, out. it's a double-digit lead for pro skills. Yeah, after the timeout, I liked one play. Like I said, Game Elite got the ball Diop for the basket. That's been the only basket since that timeout. And pro skills has just really done a nice job. of. They've, they've got the tempo going the way they want. They've got a lot of quick guys. They're beating Diop down the floor, so no rim re protector most of the time there. And uh, it's paying off for them. So Hayes now is seven, and they have been large the last seven points that have been scored by Pro Skills. So a double digit lead. Now a little extended zone here. Or maybe well, simply no, it's just, just, a, just playing a safety no, on Diop. Yeah. I, I know I, I thought that at first, Greg, but yeah. I was just a really sagging man with the way the offense is set up. There's a foul call, but yeah, you're, you're just matching shooters and bases saying we're not going to guard you more than 10 feet from the basket when Diop's in the game. Yeah, I would. I, I I know Game Elite's got some nice offensive sets. They've run a couple that I've complimented them on, but five out right now is probably not going to be a real good game plan with the clock right now in the favor until halftime of Pro Elite. Landrew from Alabaster, Alabama. Not this helping himself at the line either. Well, frankly, uh, neither <laughs> team's knocking him down from the line so far. I've got him one for six at the line as, as a game so far. Now one for five one. is his game elite squad. That's why I meant one for five. I was counting this one as a miss already. Well, once you get the <laughs> fingers and toes. You know, yeah. And their game's go. going on on other courts as we speak. Basically, most teams will play seven times over the course of four days. But this is the championship court. This is the championship game. Our 16U final will follow this one. At 12 o'clock Eastern time, 11 o'clock locally here in Memphis. Boy, Runner by Hayes. Hayes has nine. He has turned it on, and Pro Skills enjoys their largest lead. Now he's been the difference here in the last five, six minutes of the game. And then Savage the got a bit here. ahead yeah. of his skis and turns it over. Yeah, it's slipping away right now. Game Elite needs to get a good defensive stop here and get a possession with Diop. And Pro Skills is going to abide to them, let them talk about it by calling a timeout. So turnover committed by Game Elite as they will take their second timeout so far of this half. Greg, some of, some of the things that happen in this type of basketball, I'm amazed at because during the season, you have time to work in a ton of practice situations and get your players set up. I mean, these kids are from all over different high schools across, you know, basically the Southwest since we're playing Southeast and Southwest since we've got a, a team from Georgia and a team from Texas. But these two teams really mesh well together overall. Their decision making has been very good. Your, your point is well made, but you're also at the end of kind of the AAU cycle. True. So basically, you've kind of got the April and May period after the high school season comes to an end. June is then reserved to go back to playing with your high school team. And then this is kind of the last week of the circuit, you know, for the elite teams in the month yeah. of July. So your point is well made, but also at this juncture, You've been together for three of the last four months at this point <laughs> if you're these teams. We had one season we counted in our, in our 15 state championship season, we had 121 practices. So, and even then, when we got that state championship game that year, sometimes like, have they played together all year? Just <laughs> timing is so important. Jiving, timing, getting to the right spots. And so far, pro skills, I've been very, very impressed. They've had a great tempo. They've played up and down well. They've shared the ball well. The six different players have scored, and MJ Hayes, as you've mentioned several times, has been the real key in the second part of the first half. I can tell that things of importance are happening on this court. There's obviously our presence with cameras, but trophy and medals and things of that ilk are all starting to show up. Blocking foul going to be called as Lomax on the drive took a bump. That foul will go against Colvin Landrew. And so Lomax will get a couple of free throws. Yeah, look at this, look at this gear as our replay gets Good drive, Lomax, just enough contact. I've seen worse been called, but Lomax with a good job of being aggressive. Cameron's got four points so far. And again, I, I think that that is allowed to be a play on if the secondary defender is not in the semi-circle. And that's True. kind of, that's yeah. kind of the, the, the explanation that was given to the game elite bench saying here, because he was in the protected area, when you're around the rim, you get a little more protection as an offensive player. And hence, that was the reason for the whistle. And Lomax makes them both. So he's got seven. 
And what was a pretty close game, now as the lead by a Baker's dozen for the team out of Texas. Landrum. Shot clock at 15. Lost the handle. And again, pro skills is flipping the script from defense oh, to offense quickly. Oh, that's going to hurt. And let's hope that Lomax is all right. Right down on the hip. Yep. I'd like to see him with a smile on his face as he gets helped up. Good sportsmanship shown by the game elite team. But what a great hard drive. It was a good foul. Nothing. Yeah, on, on the he, yeah. he was going for the, their legs got tangled. Yeah. That was the issue. He was going for the clean block. Yeah, here we go. On the push, good dish. Yeah, just got the legs tangled. Had no foot didn't ever want to come down with the defender's feet there. So Lomax will shoot another pair. Been pretty good at the line this morning. You talked about the issues that Pro Skills has had from the line. Two of six for the game elite, I should yeah, say. Yeah, game elite. Pro yeah. Skills, <laughs> they've been knocking them down. They have been knocking them down, except Cello Jackson. They've been knocking them down regularly. Lomax with eight, and Hayes with nine. If you look at most of these pool play and quarterfinal games, again with the cream of the crop from across the country, not many lopsided games for either of these two teams. So this is somewhat unusual to see this stretch to a 15-point deficit. Well, game elite, I'd love to see Diop get more touches, and at the same time, i got to credit uh, Seven Spurlock's a really good defender, as you can see him on the post there. Spurlock not even guarding him, he's just a basket protector, and Diop, when he steps out, doesn't have to worry about him. Hutcherson gets his second bucket, he's got four. That's kind of like manna from heaven right now for Game Elite. They were stuck on 19, yeah. Spurlock, left hand, tried to collect himself before Diop could get to him. Took the shot, but missed it. Let's see if Game Elite can make it back-to-back -back buckets, a contested jump shot. Good work by Landrew, though, and found just a sliver of space and got it to go. I don't know how he created that space, but Goldman Landrew with a good bucket there, his second. He had a three earlier in the game. Landrew attends Thompson High School. 34-23. Spurlock, good left hand, just couldn't finish. Well, they got Diop away from the basket, so he knew he could attack the rim a lot easier there. Good drive and kick, not enough contact Short. for a foul, yeah. but... Again, that longer distance playing the college three-point line. Extends the floor a little bit on the drive. Tried to use that rim as protection, didn't matter. First try, misses. Hayes picking up the loose change. And Hayes, another and one opportunity. He's got one of those already. Yeah, great He's follow the game's here. First double-digit score Just with 11. No court awareness. Devin Hutcherson missed the block out. And a great, great follow there by Hayes. Joshua Wilkerson now in the game for Game Elite. Kingston Willis will give Spurlock a breather for pro skills out of Texas. Kevin Savage the third will also come back in. As you referred earlier in the game, the youngest player in the game from the standpoint of not even in high school yet. Kevin Savage the third there. There are some young men that, and we'll see this a lot in the next game, where they're only going to be high school sophomores, but again, this is an age bracket right. competition. Savage has the asterisk by his name, playing up. He is playing up a classification. In an AAU, that is gold if you can do that. Right. That was a great experience for him. Great opportunity to play against older kids. Not saying better, because there's a lot of great kids in his grade too, but older, stronger yeah, well, bodies. He is so good in terms of high school hoops. Diop. Everything but the bucket. Yeah. Great take, good footwork, good presence to get there, just a little too strong. I think he was a little too anxious there. He's only he's got three baskets. He's he's touched the ball. I've only counted five times he's touched the ball. That's the fifth time. Three of them have been baskets. The other time he kicked out for an open three. Well, not surprisingly, given his size, again, he played extensively at the high school varsity level as high school last year. 14 blocks, 11 rebounds, or 14, me, 14 points. points, 11 <laughs> rebounds, three blocks a game. Chance to push it back to more than 15. Good take. The make. That's Lomax. He joins Hayes now in double figures with 11. A great step back move. If we get a chance to see that again, he, he steps back with that right foot to create space. Even though he's going against maybe a taller player, he creates the space to get that shot off. 
Shot clock at 17. Long three does not go. And rebound controlled by Pro Skills. This is Willis. A bad place to never drive to that dead spot in the corner. Corner and uh, free throw lane area. It's a bad place to pick your dribble up. Savage will pull from 16 and smoothly knocks it home. He's got six. Yeah, I'm impressed. He dribbles with his right and shoots it with his left hand. That's that's not easy for a young kid to come off your right-hand dribble and be a left-handed shooter there. And now with the shot clock turned off, you'll see Cameron Lomax hold for a final look. First time the shot clock is probably going to come into effect here in this whole first half. Yeah, you're right. It's not been close. No. Needs to go. Saunders in time, but could not get it to go, and we are at halftime. So it was back and forth for the first eight minutes. The second eight minutes, the second quarter, if you will, dominated by Pro Skills. 39-25, the team from Texas leads in this 15U U.S. Open Boys Championship as you're watching on USA Basketball and YouTube. Welcome to the USA Basketball 3X National Championships on the campus of Colorado College. We're going to have some great action. Looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Right over. Energy right now. Defense! 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 Move, move! Get out, get out, Pat! Defense! Yo, defense, hit! Yes! Yo, y'all being too light! Grab the rebound, let's go! Incredible experience. I mean, talent here, a ton of great teams, and just been a lot of fun. I like the fast pace and the competitiveness. Championship Sunday here for the USA Basketball 3X Nationals. It's been a great dichotomy between the two brackets. The men's teams are more older, experienced players. And then you've got the college players on the women's side that have really embraced this format. Championship game. Here we go. Good slip. Yep. He rolls to the goal on a nice find and yep. throws it down. Answer for dead. Down the baseline. Finger roll up and in. Wallace quick outlet to Iverson for the corner two and he got it. Wallace takes Travis to the baseline. Scores and he's fouled. Baker almost tied him up. Fredet spins into space and hits the two. Time has been the more aggressive team in this game. They have. They've played very well, and, and Team Miami hasn't got a lot really going. They've had to earn their shot. Miami shot partially blocked by Wallace. A two pointer can win it for Showtime. Baker, though, will throw it down with two hands and put Showtime on the brink of winning this matchup. Brown Jr. initiates against Barry. Takes him right to the rim. And, and roll up and game in, and that'll winner. do it. Showtime are the USA Basketball men's 3X national champions. We have one game left, so don't change that channel because this is going to be an outstanding one. The women's final is coming up next. Here we go. Jackson takes it to the rim and scores. Clear screen for Rosnick. Rosnick knocks it in. Jackson's open for a two to tie off the back of the rim. No good. Molly lets the rebound carry him out. She'll pick it up and shoot it and hit it. She's oh in my. the zone. Jensen gets the step on Brown and scores. Boy, Creighton's running out to a five-point lead. No space to shoot. Now Molly attacks against the Jesus. Put oh. it up, put it in, and through the foul. Now Creighton a point away. Jackson takes Molly to the goal. Got the roll. Fatigue started to set in big time. For both teams. Jackson hits the two. It's a three-point game. Hey, oh, Jensen got the step, and she'll soar to the goal and put it away. Duke yeah. fell asleep for just a second. Jensen capitalizes, and Creighton is the women's 3X national champions. So the highlight reel you just saw during halftime of this game, 39-25, this 15U men's championship for the U.S. Open being held here in Memphis, Tennessee. Pro skills leading Game Elite out of Georgia. We'll show you some highlights as well, but I frankly want to reference 
the things that you saw in that highlight reel because you were on the call along with Rob Brown of the 3X National Championships back in May. What was that experience like in Colorado Springs? Well, second year in a row, I was blessed to be able to do it. We did it in Springfield, Massachusetts the year before. But a, a, another great tournament run by USA Basketball. Uh, just the skill level and quality of play, the sportsmanship was outstanding. It was a really great experience, Greg. All right, so highlights from this one. Again, Diop has an advantage inside. Problem for Game Elite is, is that they're not either getting it to him enough, but also they're not getting enough stops at the other end of the floor because Pro Skills is pretty much getting a good look every time down the floor. Yeah, Pro Skills got in transact transition, as you'll see, a lot of baskets. And you'll see number four a lot here towards the end of our highlight reel. Cameron Lomax really gave them a spark the second quarter of that first half, if I do, if I can say that. Uh, but just did a wonderful job here as we're getting ready to start the second half. 16-minute half. It's second half now, even though our graphic says first half. There we go. Halftime. There. Look how fast that went. Boom, boom, boom. We're ready to go here with the second half. Just but five minutes at halftime of these games. Okay, first time we have seen, well, second time we've actually seen pro skills go into a zone. 1-2-2 two, two, half court trap, like a 1-3-1 one, one to 1-2-2, one, two, two, kind of an amoeba. See if it gets uh, Game Elite to speed up a little bit. They're, boy, they're really moving their feet. Love the way Seven Spurlock plays defense. Shot clock in single digits. Now an open look to the baseline. Can Landrew knock it down? No. Well, they were patient, did a good job, but a great job by Pro Skills to get Game Elite to take a shot probably they weren't expecting to take to open the second half. Willis had the rebound. So it's Willis, Hayes, Spurlock. Hayes shot, no. Kevin Savage, the third, the rebound. This yeah. is Hutcherson. <laughs> On the drive, the take, and got it to go. So Hutcherson gets the bucket. He has got six as well. As an offer for Ole Miss, he had 29 in an earlier victory against Team Charlotte. Yeah, Pro Skills has a nice lead here. Drew a foul. Oh my gosh, if Lomax made that, they weren't going to count it anyway. But I said, like, holy cow, if he makes that one, <laughs> he needs to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> it was a great drive. He drew the foul there. I mean, look at the contact. He still was able to get that shot off. Nice job there. Really impressed with Cameron Lomax with his Pro Skills team out of Texas. He's out of McKinney, Texas, in Heritage High School. Left alone, just got lost defensively. I like that set, Greg, because it spreads the defense out and you take any way, any help side out of the play there. Cello Jackson got the bucket to go. Cello 6'3", 205. Jop, no, or Diop oh. rather, excuse me, missed it the second time around. Spurlock the rebound. Running the floor is Hayes, forgot one important thing, the ball, but did not turn it over and there's still plenty of time to reset here for pro skills. Boy, two great looks at the rim by Diop there. Made his first three shots, has missed his last three. Diop waiting makes that a tough shot. And I think they're gonna get Spurlock for yeah. throwing the off arm. Yeah, quite frankly, it wasn't a good place to pass him the basketball to. They're, they're spacing so far in the second half. A tough place to be when you got Diop and he pushed off, great call. This has been an extremely well officiated game. We don't give them enough credit. We blame them a lot for things they don't deserve. We don't give them enough credit sometimes. They've done a wonderful job on the call stage. They have brought in officials yeah. from across the country to be a part of this event. We saw one from our state. Good friend of ours in. and Sean yeah. West was working earlier today. Low block, Diop, and he's fouled. And again, I, I, I don't think the issue for Game Elite is offensive. I think it's been defensively. At the same time, if they, he's not getting a post touch every time down the floor, I don't think Game Elite's doing it right. Well, yeah, and, and at the same time, Pro Skills is playing that half court trap now, so they're trying to get Game Elite sped up a little bit, the team in orange out of Georgia, to take shots that they're not in their comfort zone. They didn't make a lot of them in the first half in their comfort zone either, quite frankly, but Diap's going to shoot a pair here. You see Mustafa. Game Elite's going to drop their players back. Confident either that Diop is going to make them both or they not want to get beat in transition. And that is an area where Pro Skills was awfully good in half number one. Yeah, but you saw Diop shoot that free throw, Greg. His balance wasn't very good. He was destined to miss. He's 0 for 3 from the line so far. 
Just got to get good balance. Just doesn't look very comfortable on the first attempts there, but usually get that weight down, you get your rear end down, get some balance. Much, Much better. better. I think he heard me. No. <laughs> I think he thought about that, though. That was a good one there. Had good balance, didn't fall over the line. 13-point lead, though, here by Pro Skills here early in the second half. The up now is seven. Jackson lost it. A game elite trying to kick it to the corner. Ah, kick it to the rim. Up. Hutcherson, no. Good job to crash down by Jackson. He had a good spot up on the left wing. I would have rather seen him throw it to. Pretty move, but again, when you've got the length that Diop does, you can recover. You've seen him pin one of the backboard already. Landrew just put it in traffic, and no, he did nothing there. Begging for a foul call is not going to happen. They're not getting good shots. You mentioned that earlier, Greg. They're just not getting real good shots. Speaking of not getting a good shot, how about not getting a shot at all? Pro Skills throws it away. And <laughs> their, <laughs> their coaching staff looks a little frustrated here. They've got a nice lead. Credit their defense. They're doing a great job defensively. And uh, Pro Skills is going to take a timeout. I could tell he was frustrated. It's like, what are we doing, fellas? The clock is on our side. We have the lead. What happened to that team we, we saw in the first half get great shots almost every possession? Demetrius Alexander, Chris Campbell, the two-man coaching staff here for Pro Skills. Get alongside Pete Smith. My name is Greg Regstraw. Again, we will have the boys 16U championship coming up in the following this one. That game starts at 12 o'clock Eastern time, 11 o'clock Central time. Pete and I and our entire crew will be back here for the girls edition of this that will wrap up on Monday. So this is the final kind of window of competition for the for the men's division. The women's division starts tomorrow and runs through Monday morning. Can't compliment the USA basketball staff enough that, that are running this and being here for this entire week. Getting one group out, bringing in a new group tomorrow, the, the outstanding women's players in the 15 and 16 under categories. Pro Skills still going to stay in their zone right now. Now it's not a trap necessarily. It's a 1-2-2. Two, two. They're not going to match with a cutter. Zone play there, not there. Baseline. Say that defensive captain, again, I've mentioned him a couple times, Seven Spurlock does a great job in the middle of both their man-to-man -man defense and their zone. Long three does not go. And the other thing that Pro Skills is doing that is not easy, they're rebounding well out of a zone. Yes, they are. Well, and perimeter-wise, you've got four guys on the perimeter for for game elite. Lomax's three does not go. Hutcherson the rebound. Hutcherson goes all the way in and Spurlock again just held his ground. Good look ahead pass to Hayes. Hayes will finish. Hayes has 14 to lead all scores. Game elite just unable to make a dent currently. Yeah, they can't make a couple jumpers against the zone. They're in big, big trouble. All poked away, but recovered by Game Elite. Landrew, ah. right idea, but Diop had begun to sink down and get position for yeah. a rebound. Yep, right on. He was going to get ready for the miss. It was a, the right idea. Never faults a kid for being a good teammate. That's what Landrew was trying to do. His T and Diop not on the same page. I don't know if this Game Elite team can mix it up defensively and do anything to to get pro skills to turn the ball over a little bit. If they can work off 20 seconds every possession before they shoot it, I like their chances to hold on to this lead. Here's Gray Bear. Spurlock, good job to fill the lane. Just again, Short -armed it. with Diop yeah. there, changed the trajectory of his shot. Oh. Boy, he had Diop to throw it to. And just couldn't get him a window. The no look pass, never could collect the ball that time, could. Cameron Lomax. Oh, stop the ball defense, but that's terrible defense. Landrew <laughs> off by of the one pro foot. Skills. I've been complimenting him the whole game. That was the worst defensive segment by Pro Skills. No one came and stopped the ball. Gave him a wide over finger roll runner there from 10 feet. Both teams have gotten just a little stagnant. You know, yeah, if you didn't see the first half, the first half was very entertaining, good basketball enjoyment. Not saying this isn't good basketball, but the pace of play has really slowed down. Again, that, this is also the seventh game in four days for these guys, and maybe that's kicking in a little bit here. Good basket cut. That'll pick yeah. it back up. Gray Bear, his second field goal, his first from two-point range. That was called from the bench, too. Nice call there. 
by the coaches of Pro Skills. It's been double figures the entire second half. Again, we play two 60 minute halves. We approach 10 minutes left to go in this 15U championship. Pretty much just a 2 3 zone now. It was a 1 2 2 for a little bit. That was a setup, partly the way they were matching to the shooters. Runner, got it. Landrew, he's got 10. He is the first game elite player in double figures. He already has a slew of collegiate offers as Landrew. On the take, good slip. I have no idea how Lomax saw Spurlock, little one, got it to him, great feed. You know, if there's one thing young basketball players can learn from that is the lower you stay, the more vision you get to see. And again, just tough to finish. That was Kevin White that couldn't finish in traffic. Lomax collects. Lomax couldn't knock it home. Inside position, though, by Pro Skills on the shot. They'll keep possession. You know, I, I think what happened was oh. I think that the rebound hit the basket support. Oh, very good. Okay. And the trail official saw it. Yep. Yeah, she sure did. She was John. She just explained it to the people on the floor. Right there. We, we went up and over. Yeah, the hit, basket hit the top of the out of bounds backboard. Yep. Right now, Pro Skills is kind of throwing jabs, which is perfectly good enough with a 15-point lead. Well, they're just going to stay in this zone until they see Game Elite make a shot from the perimeter, which this half they have not done. Well, what it also does—that's a long two that does not go. Ooh. It's going to be a foul on the undercut, oh. Lomax. Ow. Didn't have position <laughs> established. What it also does, as long as Diop is out there, it eliminates the most potent scoring threat, which is Diop on the low block. Yep, absolutely. Colvin Landry with a good job hitting that weak side board there. You see Lomax just a little late on the block out. He's called for the foul. 2 3 zone out of bounds underneath for Pro Skills. You see games going on. There's eight courts on this side of the facility. Love it. There's eight more on the other side. And you will at times hear whistles from other courts and you have to go, wait a minute. No, you, you get used to it. These players get used to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Savage three, no. The long rebound tipped out and tracked down by game elites, Jalen Humphrey. Hutcherson on the drive. And late, late. Blocking yep. foul Excellent inside call. of the semicircle. Yeah, right idea by Lomax, but it was late on the rotation here. Watch him slide over just a little late. Comes over, it's a good idea. And I'm sorry, I said Lomax, but it was uh, Solo Jackson. Yep. Solo Jackson. And I said it was in the circle, he was not, but yeah. great job by our baseline camera operator. Sure that he was still moving. So Hutcherson goes to the free throw line. Johns Creek, Georgia. That Holy is a innocence. Hopping, hopping area around Atlanta. Sorry about that, Greg. That's a hopping area. I've been to Johns Creek before, growing area. Holy Innocence Episcopal School. Connects on that one. A rare made free throw <laughs> by Game Elite. Not saying they would be in this game necessarily, but they really struggled at the first half shooting free throws, two of six at halftime. 13 point game. Saunders back in for Pro Skills. And both these teams with eight in uniform yeah. today. Hayes, good basket. Hayes with 16. Boy, he's done it quietly, right. too. Nothing we, flashy, no. just everything no. solid. Jay Hayes, Jr. There's Diop finally getting a touch around the basket. Can he finish it? Good, good block. by Saunders. Yeah, second man came over and rotated and blocked that shot. It probably doesn't happen to Diop too many times to get a second man to rotate over to block a shot. Saunders at six foot six. Yeah. Spurlock gets beat just a little bit. All ball. And a timeout going to be taken by Game Elite. There was concern that was going to be a turnover. Right. So it's a 30 second timeout again. We will keep it right here. And 24 teams were in pool play, six different pools. So you played three games in your pool, then 16. Teams qualified for the championship bracket. And this Pro Skills team lost their opening game to the Utah Prospects by 17. They have not lost since. Game Elite went one and two. 
Hello there, our courtside view from hey. our camera position of Alan Hughes across the way. Alan, as always, good to see you. Greg Regstraw and Pete Smith with you. This game elite squad went one and two in pool play. They were the last team to qualify and they are playing for the for the championship in 15 years. Yeah, and they are looking really sharp, particularly that first half. Built a nice 15-point lead here. With, well, we got 8 8:29 to go still. Plenty of time for Game Elite to get going here, but Pro Skills has just looked very sharp in most of the stuff they've done. And a foul and a force out going to be called against Saunders. That's too bad Saunders couldn't just get away from him if you're a fan of their team because he had nowhere to go. Will just couldn't back off. He just kind of runs him off the line, as we used to say. There's the pass. And he's got his hand in his stomach. Pretty nice job by Kevin Savage of kind of calling for that call, too. Hey, look at his hand. It's right in my stomach. Quick substitution comes in here for Pro Skills. Good basket cut by Landrew and scores it. Yeah, I, th I think Pro Skills may need to get out of the zone now because I think they finally figured it out a little bit. Landrum with a good basket there and good cut. Well, Diop also shows what any modern big needs to have, a good skill set in terms of passing the basketball. Well, he, he, yeah, he's a willing passer. Some bigs aren't. Turnover. Hutcherson <laughs> throws it down. <laughs> Not bad for a young man that's going to be a high school sophomore, right? Well, and how quick he did it. It's amazing how quick they bounce off this floor. So at 11, this is as close oh, as an Game Elite has been. And before I can finish the sentence, Gray Bear knocks it home, his second made three. Yeah, Keontae, that's a great way to answer the short run. Landrew, again, just a lot of arms and length in that traffic for Pro Skills. One on three. Hayes off the window, <laughs> scores it. A lunch pail kind of player for this pro skills team. But he's got 18 points. Very sly and deceptive on his move. He's just got really good, you know, some, something that's really big in basketball. Deception is really good. Bad in life, good in basketball, though. He's got it. Looking for Hutcherson. Again, good quick hands to knock that ball free by pro skills. So just you thought Game Elite was working themselves back in it. Now a bucket by Spurlock makes it an 18-point game. Wow. I'd like to see the teams that beat them earlier in the week. Either they had just really terrible games, or uh, we know the competition. This is why this is the championships. Fouling at Spurlock, trying to root Diop out of the position. Yeah, to qualify for this tournament, these teams had to beat a lot of teams in the past two months to get here. Yeah, this is the best of the best that are playing in this event, which is why Memphis was a very popular destination amongst coaches over the course of the last few days. Well, it's a gorgeous facility, this Memphis Sports and Event Center. And it is a somewhat unforced turn by Game Elite. A little extended zone wing pressure. And now Game Elite down by 18, which is 640 left to play. Will have to kind of pick up the pressure of their own accord here. Yeah, I, I don't know if they can do it. I don't know if they've got the material to, to be able to press. They are a little bit bigger than the Pro Skills team, size-wise. Diop with the block, and he has been impressive. Nice cut. But in the lane, it's Gray Bear that got it to go, and now he becomes the third at different Pro Skills player to go to double figures. He's got 10. And at 20, this may end up being the largest win of the week for Pro Skills here in the championship game. I, I can tell that the game, game elite team coaching staff wants that ball to go in a little bit more to Diop there. He had a pretty nice post up. Here's the block by Diop there. Just so active. Got a great wingspan. What a great, great ceiling he has ahead of him as a basketball player. I wave it off. Ooh, yep, yep, Diop yep. was in the lane early. Yep. You were waiting for that, weren't you, Greg? <laughs> so on the <laughs> on the first one plus the bonus opportunity, wave it off for Savage because Diop could not hang on from jumping the lane and starting to go from bad to worse for Game Elite. Yeah, Game Elite's got to do something defensively because. 
the clock is in favor of pro skills right now. They can take that much time off it. That's even a little bit quicker than I think they wanted to shoot at that time. The great uh, hands. And eventually Willis out of there with it. Hayes yep. goes up Ooh. on Diop, couldn't finish over him. Good hustle on the rebound and Diop and the pro skills player kind of got tied up. Let's hope that he's all right. Yeah, they both had possession of the ball on the rebound and Diop was just trying to rip it away from him. Diop had it, good rebound on the weak side. action. So Pro skills the ball in a 20 point lead. As the sands of the hourglass are ticking through. Three is good. Bucket by Hayes. Hayes now with 21. Again he's got an offer from Arkansas Little Rock. He's got a few more offers the way Hayes is playing in this championship game. And a blocking foul called against Keontae Graybear. So Diop will shoot one plus the bonus. Went one for two his last time up. And connects. They're not the great of balance on that free throw line, but knock that one in. And again, even in a game where the bigs are treated differently, that is still a resource that every team wants to have. He will have multiple colleges, I'm sure, knocking on his door in the future. And we have a stoppage, stoppage play. in play. And we have a scoreboard malfunction oh, we do, yeah. behind the action. So we have one that's working properly. And now we've got this one behind the play working. Hence the reason for the stop. A couple of players will yep. come back in here for pro skills as Cello Jackson and Cameron Lomax will return. Great man-to-man -man defense still by game elite. Just really have trouble matching up. You see Diop's having to guard the biggest player that they have. That opens up the lane a little bit there. Pull up, does not go. Back on the loose ball. Again, tracked down by Pro Skills. Well, they're winning on the scoreboard. They're winning in kind of every category of this game. Yeah, they've, they've got the 50-50 balls. They've got the offensive boards. Diop's going to go back to the line for a pair. This helps. Game elite. Anytime they can get stoppage of the clock and maybe get a defensive set or change here, that could help them. Seven Spurlock's going to come in after that short break. There you see the foul. He's good until he reaches down. As soon as he's slapped down on the basket ball, Jackson gets called for the foul. Landrew 12, Hutcherson 10, Diop 8 to lead game elite. Short. See Spurlock check back in. Spurlock averaged 11 points and eight rebounds a game for this Pro Skills team when they played at the prestigious Peach Jam a couple of weeks ago. Always one of the highlights of the summer circuit. Job misses or Diop misses that as well. I guarantee you he'll get better as a free throw shooter. It's it's not his release on the shot or his elbow. It's just his balance. He's, you mentioned earlier in broadcast. I think he's grown this week while he's been here. <laughs> Spot up three on the wing is good. Hayes knocks it down again. Boy, how 24 good has he been? Four from wow. MJ Hayes. Wow. How <laughs> good has he been? And it is a 25 point game. This was close for the first eight minutes. And from that point forward, Pro Skills has up and left this team from Georgia. Runner by Kevin Savage, the third, does not go, but he'll get a couple of free throws for his efforts. He is one of two from the line today. Kingston Willis not really sure what he did to draw to earn the foul. Nice job of officiating and just explaining it to him gently and 
subtly. Here's what happened. Here's what I saw, and that's what I called. So he's got that left hand, and he displaced him. That's yep. definite displacement with the left hand. So <laughs> give the offensive player, as you see him, Kevin Savage, credit for recognizing that drive to the basket, and that was the foul call. Savage to shoot one more and makes them both. Oh, he's got a great stroke. Now he has some full court pressure. Just in a man. I thought they were going to trap the ball, but they're not. But frankly, it is a game of keep away at this point. Yeah, it is, yeah. It yeah. is a wait till the shot clock gets to single digits and then you go. Yeah, pro or skills has, quite frankly, pro skills has won this game at this point of the contest. Is theirs to lose. Deep three, <laughs> my goodness. I don't know if MJ is always that good, but he's been great as coaching staff. I'm looking at them, they just got a sheepish little grin, like, boy, he's having a great game. 27, and the lead is 26. Well, there'll be presentation of a championship trophy, a championship and runner-up medals at the conclusion of this game. But as my partner alluded to, the outcome of this one has long since been decided. It has been double digits the entire way since halftime. And, and the first eight minutes was very close. It, oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. We have officially hit heat check time <laughs> for MJ Hayes. <laughs> wow. Pull up. Does not go. Yeah, this will not be that, uh, the ending that game lead had hoped for, <laughs> given the fact they had played so well. Right to get to this point after starting the pool play one and two. Last team to qualify on point differential. They make it all the way to the <laughs> final. And if somebody else shoots this other than Hayes, they're doing it wrong. Hayes from distance yeah. a little too far <laughs> that time. He knew he was but, coming. But, hey, hey, listen, you have carte blanche. <laughs> the only thing you're asked to do is wait to end the shot clock. But anywhere in the building would have been fine the way he's been knocking them down. 30 for Hayes. <laughs> kind of the lonely guy on the bench now. Probably no one gets close to him. They'll burn up. He's been so hot. So Lomax will exit. Hey, Diop got a touch. There's the willing pass I told you he was. Hutcherson misses everything. You're starting to think about flights or bus trips <laughs> home at, at this juncture. We're not, though. we got another one coming up after this. And we'll start at 11 o'clock Central Time, noon Eastern Time for our 16U Championship featuring Arizona Unity. They'll take on JL3, another team out of Texas, JL3 in terms of John Lucas the third. Drive and dish. Gray Bear will take the three. and. That Boy. one goes <laughs> too as the shot clock goes down. 13 for Gray Bear. Just one of those days. Well, they've shot the ball well. They've shared the ball well, even though Hayes has scored a ton of points. Cameron Lomax in the first half was the one that really gave him a great spurt to build up that lead towards the halftime. They were up 14 at half, 39-25. Saunders got fouled. Just the second foul in its game, Elite. That'll be on the floor. This was an 11 point game at 49 to 38. So a 24 to three run to close this one out for pro skills. I'm not saying game elite gave up by any means. They just don't have anything left in the tank. No, no. They just have nothing to combat. Some pro days skills. it is not your day. <laughs> Another three is good. Kingston. Kingston Willis <laughs> for Fort Worth, Texas. Plays for Oak Cliff Family Faith Academy. And a timeout going to be called. So my game elite. Yeah, situation like this, I'm just guessing. We're going to take a look at the pro skills team, but I, I, I see what game elites coaches are doing. Their head coach particularly just talking about the fact that this is one of these games where maybe we didn't contest shots enough. But 
you know, we've got to learn from this. You've got plenty of games in the future. You've still got two more years, three more years, two, three more years coming up in high school with these guys. And yeah, this is just a learning moment. You're looking and saying, why are we calling a timeout with a minute six to go? You're, you're just kind of rallying the troops yeah. at this point. Well, you've had a great tournament. You made right. the championship. You didn't expect to lose by potentially 30 points, as it could end up being. But meanwhile, you see the pro skills huddle and happy group of young men. One and two to start out there in the pool play. And boy, did they get it going. Amazingly, the pro skills team, their lone loss was the Utah Prospects. Game Elite beat them in the, in the round of 16. So the one loss the Pro Skills had, Game Elite beat that team. A couple of days ago. Diop will get the uncontested bucket. He now has double digits. I would expect the shot clock to just run out here. I don't really see. Pro Skills probably trying to even get a shot up. I've enjoyed watching their coaching staff, Greg, just do a really nice job of, of teaching moments and talking to them, how to handle this win, this championship win. They may get a shot up here. They do. I'll take one and yeah. miss everything. And Demetrius Alexander, Chris <laughs> Campbell, the two-man coaching staff to our left. Camera right. Pro Skills of Texas. Steal in the backcourt. Ball knocked away by Game Elite. Shot clock no longer a factor at this point. Let's see if Game Elite made us try to. Well, <laughs> ball stolen away by a player for Game Elite. Now showcase a little bit. <laughs> Spurlock with 10. And so Diop says, ah, I'll hold yeah. it. He was going to go do the same thing, but both teams say, you know what? Enough is enough. Your 15U champs to the U.S. Open Basketball Championship. Pro skills in dominant fashion. 77 to 43. Pete, your thoughts on this one? Started out, it looked like it was going to be a really evenly matched game. And about that halfway part of the first quarter, led by Cameron Lomax, they got off to a big spurt, that being pro skills. And the second half, they just dominated. Game Elite just could never get anything going offensively. Kingston Willis with eight. Keontae Graybear with 13. The star, MJ Hayes with 30. Seven Spurlock with 10. Cameron Lomax, 11. Cello Jackson with six. Rice and Howard, Will Saunders both played, but did not score. For Game Elite, Kevin Savage, the third, with eight. Kevin White with three. Coleman Landrew, a dozen. Mustafa Diop with 10. Josh Wilkerson played, but did not score. Jalen Humphrey played, but did not score. Jaden London played but did not score. And Devin Hutcherson finished with 10. You see the trophy presentation to the 15 U champs and pro skills. And you see the medals, medals yeah. being presented as well. Job well done, guys. And again, this team won their last six games. And this is by far, they won most of their games by somewhere between 5 and 12 points. This was the anomaly. They played amazingly well in this championship game. They, they sure did. A little low to start the second half, but Game Elite was not sharp either. And then Pro Skills really turned it on. What a second half by M.J. Hayes, Jr. Well, congratulations to Pro Skills of Texas. They are your ninth grade men's division champions. Congratulations to Game Elite on a fantastic week, just kind of a thud at the finish for the team out of Georgia. Our next game will come your way at noon Eastern time, 11 o'clock local time here in Memphis. That'll be the 16U championship game between J3 Elite out of Texas and Arizona Unity. For Pete Smith and our entire ISC Sports Network crew, this is Greg Regstraw. Goodbye for now. We'll see you in approximately 20 minutes here on USA Basketball's YouTube channel. It's the 24th Nike Hoop Summit, but most importantly, it's the first time that the women's side is going to participate as well. Team World versus Team USA. Look at right, look at right, look at right, look at right, look at right. Look at right.
grabs the steal, and there's Collier. by Team USA, forcing a turnover. Ronnie James on the break. Oh. And one! Oh. 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 KK Arnold on the other side. How about the pesky defense? Let's go, KK! Oh. Donovan, the block, and then the basket. I'm trying to get you an ISO on that screen, yeah. not to pass it. Yes, man. Let's run low. We need to be up 10 going into the second. All right, say that, say that. USA on three. USA. Another steal. Caliente. Going inside immediately, and Cunningham sealing and finishing. Winning culture, gold standard, and we out. Who's standing? Let's go. You want to stay on three? One, two, three. Yeah. At the 2023 U.S. Open Basketball Championships, we had more than 60 teams from across 18 different states, and that included a division for the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We were really happy to include that group as well. The purpose of this event is to bring the national governing body standards to the tournament space. And so USA Basketball puts on an event that's run by our guidelines and standards which really are emphasizing fun and development. I actually enjoy playing basketball, being around my peers and knowing that they're going to bring the best out of me, I bring the best out of them. You know, for me, that's what it's all about, just having that, having that joy. Trying to add to the 11-0 run. Carmelo for three. How about that? What a big shot. I went four years for this battle. We used to put America basketball back where it's supposed to be, on top. chance for Lee. He's one of the great scorers in international history. Had him exactly where he wanted him. It hasn't really sunk into me yet that, you know, this is four Olympics for me. And having a chance to win three gold medals, it's not sinking in right now. Maybe after the fact, maybe years down the line when I sit back and kind of recap out of my life and my career, it will sink into me. Growing the game means that everyone is invited to play. And at the USA Basketball Foundation, we understand the importance that mentorship sparks opportunity for talent BIPOC students to accelerate their professional development both on and off the court. 
Did you know that young adults with the mentor are 130% more likely to hold a leadership position? By investing in minorities at the onset of their careers after college, we can boost the representation of Black, Hispanic, and Asian American women and Hispanic and Asian American men at manager levels up to 24%. This year, our inaugural cohort for the Torch Leadership in Sport Mentoring Program had eight talented young people. I'm honored to introduce you to two of them, Latyra and Isabel. One of my things that I'm looking forward to doing in the field is possibly going to social responsibility, and I didn't know that until I started this program, so that's one of the benefits that I have gained from that. My favorite part was being able to listen to what we as people within the sports industry can do to help accelerate their movement because that's something that I'm really passionate about is accelerating women in sports. When you support the USA Basketball Foundation, you are investing in programs like Torch to grow the game and ignite a flame in the hearts of BIPOC students across the country. As we prepare to welcome our second cohort, I invite you to tune in over the following week to learn more about Torch and support this vital work. All time leading FIBA World Cup. Diana Taurasi? Uh, Diana Taurasi. Lisa Leslie? Yes. Diana? Lisa. Oh, that was going to be my second one. Lisa Leslie. Yeah! Is it a guard or a post? Lisa Leslie? Yes. Yo! Let's go. World Cup, Diana. Sue. Yes. Yes. Okay. Brandon Stewart. Sue. Uh, okay. I mean, either Sue or Stewie. Sue, Birdie. Sue and DT have the most like gold medals, right? Sue. Yes. Ah! Yes. Me. We know it's Diana, we know it's Sue, we know it's Stewie. How many more UConn players? <laughs> Swin Cash. Asia Jones. Cynthia Cooper. Tamika Ketchins. Cheryl Swoops. Brittany Griner. Asia. Maya Moore. Carol there. Walters. There it is. Yes. Welcome to the USA Basketball 3X National Championships on the campus of Colorado College. We're gonna have some great action. Looking forward to it. Oh yeah. Let's go. Right now. Then is he right now? Defense! 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 Get out, get out, Cap. Yo, defense, hit. Yes! Yo, y'all being too black. Round the rebound. Let's go! Incredible experience. I mean talent here, a ton of great teams, and it's just been a lot of fun. I like the fast pace and the competitiveness. It's Championship Sunday here for the USA Basketball 3X Nationals. It's been a great dichotomy between the two brackets, the men's teams, more older, experienced players. And then you've got the college players on the women's side that have really embraced this format. The USA Basketball 3X National Men's Championship game. Here we go. Good slip, yeah. He rolls to the goal on a nice find and throws it down. Answer for that. Down the baseline, finger roll up and in. Wallace, quick outlet to Iverson for the corner two, and he got it. Wallace takes Travis to the baseline, scores, and he's fouled. Baker almost tied him up. Fredette spins into space and hits the two. Showtime has been the more aggressive team in this game. They have. They've played very well, and, and Team Miami hasn't got a lot really going. They've had to earn their shots. 
shot partially blocked by Wallace. A two-pointer can win it for Showtime. Baker, though, will throw it down with two hands and put Showtime on the brink of winning this matchup. Brown Jr. initiates against Barry. Takes him right to the rim. And, roll up and game in, and that'll winner. Do it. Showtime are the USA Basketball men's 3X national champion. We have one game left, so don't change that channel because this is going to be an outstanding one. The women's final is coming up next. Here we go. Jackson takes it to the rim and scores. Clear screen for Rosnick. Rosnick knocks it in. Jackson's open for a two to tie off the back of the rim, no good. Molly lets the rebound carry him out. She'll pick it up and shoot it and hit it. She's oh, in the zone. Jensen gets the step on Brown and scores. Boy, Creighton's running out to a five-point lead. No space to shoot. Now Molly attacks against the Jesus. Oh. Put, it up, put it in and drew the foul. Now Creighton a point away. Jackson takes Molly to the goal. Got the roll. Fatigue started to set in big time. For both teams. Jackson hits the two. It's a three-point game. Hey, oh, Jensen got the step and she'll soar to the goal and put it away. Duke fell asleep for just a second. Jensen capitalizes, and Creighton is the women's 3X national champions. It's the 24th Nike Hoop Summit, but most importantly, it's the first time that the women's side is going to participate as well. Team World versus Team USA. Look at right, look at right, look at right, look at right, look at right. Look at right. There's the steal, and there's Collier. Oh. Williams on fire. Staggering defense by Team USA, forcing a turnover. Ronnie James on the break. And one. Donovan, the block, and then the basket. I'm trying to get you, and I still want that screen. Yes. Not to pass it. Yes, man. Let's run it up. We need to be up 10 going into the second. All right, say that, say that. USA on three. USA. Another steal. Caliente. Going inside immediately, and Cunningham sealing and finishing. At the 2023 U.S. Open Basketball Championships, we had more than 60 teams from across 18 different states, and that included a division for the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. We were really happy to include that group as well. This event is to bring the national governing body standards to the tournament space. And so USA Basketball puts on an event that's run by our guidelines and standards, which really are emphasizing fun and development.
Coach K yesterday when we interviewed him, he was so impressed because he said, you didn't have to be here. You don't need to be here. So why are you here? I actually enjoy playing basketball, being around my peers and knowing that they're going to bring the best out of me, I bring the best out of them. You know, for me, that's what it's all about, just having that, having that joy. Trying to add to the 11 0 run. Carmelo for three. How about that? What a big shot. I went four years for this time. We used to put American basketball back where it's supposed to be. On top. Anthony has to put it up. That's good. A three pointer on a broken play. A big lead move how in front of him. No chance for Lee. One of the great scorers in international history had him exactly where he wanted him. It hasn't really sunk into me yet that, you know, this is four Olympics for me and having a chance to win three gold medals. It's not sinking in right now. Maybe after the fact, maybe years down the line when I sit back and kind of recap kind of my life and my career, it will sink into me. Growing the game means that everyone is invited to play. And at the USA Basketball Foundation, we understand the importance that mentorship sparks opportunity for talent BIPOC students to accelerate their professional development both on and off the court. Did you know that young adults with the mentor are 130% more likely to hold a leadership position? By investing in minorities at the onset of their careers after college, we can boost the representation of Black, Hispanic, and Asian American women and Hispanic and Asian American men at manager levels up to 24%. This year, our inaugural cohort for the Torch Leadership in Sport Mentoring Program had eight talented young people. I'm honored to introduce you to two of them, Latyra and Isabel. One of my things that I'm looking forward to doing in the field is possibly going to social responsibility, and I didn't know that until I started this program, so that's one of the benefits that I have gained from that. My favorite part was being able to listen to what we as people within the sports industry can do to help accelerate their movement because that's something that I'm really passionate about is accelerating women in sports. When you support the USA Basketball Foundation, you are investing in programs like Torch to grow the game and ignite a flame in the hearts of BIPOC students across the country. As we prepare to welcome our second cohort, I invite you to tune in over the following week to learn more about Torch and support this vital work. Welcome back to Memphis, Tennessee. It is time for our second championship here at the U.S. Open Championships as part of USA Basketball. We just crowned our ninth grade men's champion. Now it is time for our 10th grade champions. Arizona Unity, which has gone five and one so far in this tournament. They lost their opening game of pool play against JL3 Elite out of Texas. This team has swept through their competition to get here. They are 6-0 and oh playing for a championship. Greg Regstraw, Pete Smith alongside in a couple of moments. Thanks for joining us on USA Basketball's YouTube channel to check out the action. Again, this is the U.S. Open, but it's also part of the NCAA College Basketball Academy. It is eight full days of basketball here at the Memphis Sports and Events Center. Four days for the boys, and then literally starting tomorrow, it is four days for the girls. We'll have the girls' championships in the ninth grade and 10th grade classifications coming up for you on Monday morning. Let's get the starting lineups for our two teams today. The JL Elite based out of Houston, Texas. Arizona Unity, you can probably figure out the location. Here is the starting lineup for JL3 Elite. Shelton Henderson, Patton Pinkins, Nigel Walls, Jacoby Coles as well, as, or Coleman rather, and learn with Sebastian Williams-Adams. 
on the flip side now for Arizona Unity. Arizona Unity down to seven players, unfortunately, uh, because of some injuries that they are dealing with. But it's a very talented roster for this Arizona Unity squad. Calic House, Cameron Holmes, Brandon McCoy, Caden House, and Jackson Richardson. Caden and Calic House as high school freshmen combined to score 41 points per game at their high school in Arizona. And Jackson Richardson plays for Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. Perhaps you've heard of his dad, Jason, who played in the NBA for many years, played at Michigan State. And the House Twins, well, their dad is like literally seated about 10 to 15 feet to my left. You may know him, Eddie House, that played for 11 years in the NBA, including winning a championship with the Boston Celtics in 2008. Pete Smith joins us now. Pete, what are your expectations <laughs> here for game number two? Well, two great teams. Uh, Unity, as you mentioned, probably lost. Their, they did lose a game, but won their last five. So you got two teams really playing on a roll that always helps with momentum as you come into a game. Um, I don't think fatigue will be much of a factor. They're used to this kind of schedule. Should be a great up and down game. We were talking to Jay Demings of USA Basketball before the game, and I just finished talking with him, and and he's really expecting a, a really fun game to watch here. Our and coach for Arizona, for Arizona Unity, Corey Boswell, B.J. Letcher. For JL3 Elite, David Mullen and Anthony Stevens. Our 10th grade championship. Thanks for joining us on USA Basketball's YouTube channel. JL3 Elite in white. The red and white look for Arizona Unity. And because a good chunk of these players will be high school juniors next year. Some will be high school sophomores. We have a few more, not college commits, but a lot more kind of college offers and frankly data on these players that are playing a year older. As John Lucas just walks by our broadcast location. Boy, good defensive segment. Start out by Arizona, forced yeah. a really deep three. Had to shoot that because the shot clock was expiring. Shot was taken and missed by Patton Pinkins. Name is Al, goes by Patton. His father is an assistant coach at Ole Miss for Chris Beard, was at Texas Tech before joining Chris at Ole Miss. Pat's got offers from Cincinnati, oh. LSU, Oral Roberts, amongst others. I like the little cross there. You don't see that very much anymore. That's a little Butler-style basketball from the state of Indiana, the Butler Bulldogs. McCoy, after a bobble, misses a long three. And the rebound corralled by JL Elite's Nigel Walls. Now, there's going to be some great intensity in this game defensively. Teams are going to get after it. On the drive, shot blocked, and a foul will be called. That foul will go against Sebastian Williams-Adams. <laughs> Sebastian, well, has the attention of college coaches across the country. His offers Houston, Kansas, Kansas State, LSU, Texas, A&M, as in both Texas and A&M, and Rice have all made an offer to Williams Adams, who is a junior to be at St. John's School in Stafford, Texas. Good high post screen, but good defense there by JL3. Tough the, shot. The fade that does not go. The rebound collected by Walls. Walls at six foot ten. Walls like a pogo stick, too. I watched him warm up, Greg. He, he just up and down, springy. Ball poked away at the other end. Is there a finish? No. Again, good body control by Williams Adams. A 6'8 and 6'10 in the low block for JL3 Elite. Spot up wing three is good. Jacoby Coleman from Plano, Texas. He plays at Liberty. It's been offered by St. Louis and High Point as he knocks that th triple down. So first bucket, nearly two minutes in. Oh, yep. He's had a passing lane steal there. Really starting their offense out really deep on the floor. Going to be a perimeter jumper, most likely, unless he can get to the rim, which he did. Holmes had it stripped, able to collect. Just couldn't finish. Again, great link for JL3 oh. Elite. Now in the run out, left hand, finger roll, left short. That was Henderson that missed it. Shelton, 6'6", from Bel Air High School in Houston. Spot up three in the corner. Got that one for Arizona Unity. Basket is good by Cameron Holmes. Attends Millennium High School. He'll be a sophomore next year. Goodyear, Arizona. 
A oh, good spin on the post. Didn't get it to him, but good spin by Walls in there to the post. Turn left a little bit short that time by Walls. They were trying to get him the ball. That was the call from the bench. Oop. And that'll be out of bounds off of Arizona Unity. So not has not been the sharpest of played games no. <laughs> the first three minutes so far. No, a lot of action, but not a lot of production when it comes to the scoreboard. But a lot of action. Both teams playing up and down hard, going fast, using their length. I have seen signs in locker rooms before that says, do not mistake activity <laughs> for achievement. Kind of where we are at this juncture of the game right now. Let's talk about a couple of the players that unfortunately you'll not see for Arizona Unity today. No Elijah Williams. You may know his dad, Monty, as the now head coach of the Detroit Pistons. Elijah is actually going to be heading to Detroit to obviously be with his family. He'll play at Brother Rice High School next year. Also, no Mapir Maker. He is here seven feet tall. Maybe you've heard of Thon Maker. That is his cousin. Mapir's older brother currently plays in the G League. On the drive, the runner does not go. That's Caden House of the House Twins. On the drive, off the window, score it. Bucket is good for Pat Pinkins. Well, Pinkins, again, was in Lubbock this past year. We'll see if he makes the move to Mississippi along with Dad. 5-2 for JL3 Elite. Well, that ball's going all over the place, Greg. <laughs> Great. Just not five. in the basket very often. <laughs> and they're going to call that yep. as an offensive foul. Williams Adams got a little extension of the arm. Well, defensively did a nice job. That that being Caden House of getting jumping in front of the ball there. He sold it very well. There was a little bit of a push. If you're in front of the ball and there's a little bit of a push, you're going to make that call. If you're not in front of the ball, you're not going to get that call, I should say. Nice job by House defensively. Christian Jones in for JL Elite. JL Elite has eight players. Arizona Unity has seven. On the drive, left hand, left short. Shot taken and missed by Brandon McCoy. At the other end, Henderson. Henderson got fouled. And again, in a game where we talk <laughs> seemingly less about height because of how we space the floor, it is noticeable that the lineup for JL3 Elite, as you see this drive to the bucket here, they are going 6'5", 6'6", 6'8", 6'10". And again, most of these young men will be high school juniors next year. Yeah, uh, yep, and that's, that's why this is the championships. These are the best of the best players in the country. Not all of them have made it to this championship game. The teams that play the best get here, and obviously JL3 being 6-0 in the week, coached by McMullen and coached by Dave McMullen and Anthony Stevens, earned the right to play here against uh, Arizona Unity. Henderson goes one of two. His first point, Henderson, LSU, Old Miss, Oklahoma State, Houston, SMU, Rutgers, Ooh. amongst those that have offered the young man from Houston. Throw it up. <laughs> for Jackson Richardson. He and his older brother both play at Bishop Gorman. Been wearing his dad's number 23 from his days in the NBA. Dad played at Michigan State. His older brother, Jace, is looking into playing at Michigan State amongst other schools. Token man-to-man -man pressure put on by Arizona Unity. Mason McGee is in there now for Arizona Unity. Late on the ball screen, cleared the baseline out. Good hands, foul called on Cameron Holmes of the Arizona Unity team right there. On the floor, so it'll be out of bounds underneath the basket. Substitution, Michael Collins comes in for JL3. First appearance of the contest. 16 minute half, we are at the 11 minute mark here of the first half. Not a lot of scoring, Greg, simply because both teams are playing really fast, almost too fast. A lot of turnover so far. Runner is up and good. Or does not go, excuse me. You're right. It's been back and <laughs> forth, but it's been kind of slog offensively. One more. Yep, made the extra pass. Does yeah. not go. Get a loose change, been tough to pick up as well. Both teams guarding exceedingly That's a well. Too. Yep. Offensive foul. Yep, very consistent. He led with that right shoulder. Our replay crew on it right there. Well, nope, we're going to clean up the floor. <laughs> There's our replay. You see, not only did he leave the shoulder, he led with the head a little bit. He put that head down, 
So that gives the official an opportunity to really zoom in on what happened. And that was the foul. So Brennan Peterson will check in. Scottsdale, Arizona plays at Notre Dame Prep. That's the extent of the match for Arizona oh. Unity. On the hesitation, slip it through, great recovery. That's McCoy, California native. At the other end, Cameron Holmes. Holmes and has made a three already. Holmes has interest from Arizona, Arizona State, Dayton, Oregon, and Washington State. All looking at this young man who will be just a high school sophomore this coming year. We're tied at six, six minutes in. Defender flies by, but I finally get to use the line walking in Memphis <laughs> on a broadcast. Mark Cohn? I think he trademarked it. Hopefully he'll let me borrow it. Yes, <laughs> good recall on your part. Song's only 32 years old. Well, I'm, I'm double that age. You and I are significantly older than yeah. 32 years of age. Sometimes make references for the parents that are watching the broadcast. That's right. So tied at six. Our facility in the shadows of both the Liberty Bowl and the old school Mid-South Coliseum. Arizona Unity with some good action there. JL3 switched all the handoffs, but they stayed through the cross cuts defensively. Never got lost, but they did get called for the foul. Subs back in. Pinkins will check back in. He's got one of just the two made field goals so far. At the other end, lay it up and in. Bucket that time is good for Michael Collins. Eight six our score. Collins from Pearland, Texas, and Shadow Creek High School. Mm. Shot missed, but the putback is there. That's Brandon McCoy, Bellflower, California, St. John Bosco, where he plays his high school hoops. Henderson for three. That does not go. And there's Richardson. A lot of dribbling, not a lot. Both teams trying to play downhill on the offensive end of the court. Again, there is, there is such, the athleticism clearly it's, is off the charts for yeah, both teams. Yeah. But there is such length and size the JL3 Elite has. It's going to be tough for, for these finishes to go for this Arizona Unity team. And again, this is without players that are 6'6 six, six and 7 foot. A little bit of a smaller lineup they are playing in this championship game today. Yeah, and if they don't get transition going, you're, you're spot on. In transition, playing downhill, they're much better. And obviously, they've won, you know, 11 of the 12 games these two teams have played combined, they have won. So it's just right now in the half court, guys are staying in front of the ball. There's been no really, really scoring opportunities. And it's just kind of a sluggish, you know, Prize fight, kind of. Eight to eight right now. We stand with 8.38 to go here until the halftime mark. This JL3 Elite team, they beat Drive Nation also from Texas, 65-55 to get to the championship game. Arizona Unity beat Indiana Elite, 76 to 73 in the semifinals yesterday. That came down to the last possession of the game. Talking to a couple college coaches that watched it. I had a chance to talk to one of the dads of Indiana Elite this morning as well. Talked about that contest. Back screen, America's play, screen the screener, nothing there. Good defense there by JL3 to not give up a layup right out of it. Shot clock is at seven, so it'll have to be quick. This is Mason McGee. I'm not McGee. sure he knows it. McGee dishes, and you're right, he did. He did not. He did not. He was not in front of his bench, and obviously the JL3 group wasn't going to Blare it out, shot clock, shot clock. And the one thing that's unique about this facility, and it's phenomenal, but the shot clocks are not above the rim. You kind of got to go old school NBA. You see it in the corner. Uh, you got to you got to kind of know where it is. Yeah. 16 courts here in the Memphis Sports and Event Center. It's going to be a foul on Richardson. Just a nudge in the back. Yeah, that's all it took. As Nigel Walls went flying.
Referee showing him it's a spot so he can't run the baseline. It's good collection of college coaches here watching this one. Michigan, Northern Illinois, Texas State amongst those that have an interest in this game. Good take there. Sebastian Adams. Good by yeah. Williams Adams. For Williams. His first bucket. Five different players have scored for JL3 Elite. And they lead it 10 to 8. Good switch defensively. The pull from 17 does not go, and Williams Adams will steer the loose ball to Christian Jones. Good find. And oh. Thought that might be a goal 10, but our officials say no. Patton Pinkins was hoping that was going to be a goal 10 as well. Well, they were above the rim. Was the ball coming down? <laughs> was the arc coming down? But great athletic. Look at this athletic play here. Boom. I would say it was probably coming down, yes. We have the benefit of replay. Yeah, they do not. Our three-man officiating crew does not. Well, they did keep the ball on the possession, so get a chance to score it anyway. Again, another good passing big. We saw that in the previous game. Leads to a triple as Pinkins got it to go. I guess they Pinkins, that was a two. And again, we're playing the college three-point line, so let's notate that as well. A little, a little more old. spacing is required from what you're used to yeah. playing for these kids at a high school level. Jamal Creshen with a foul in the back door cut. First time we have mentioned Jamal's name today. Jamal has interest from schools like George Mason, Lamar, and Sam Houston State, amongst others. And this is a who's who in terms of yeah. hoops for these this age group. And they are only rising juniors and sophomores out here. Up and under, no. Caden House will shoot two. Caden and Kallick. They will be high school sophomores. They led their high school to the state semifinals in Arizona last year. They went 25 and five. And man, could their dad fill it up. Yes, he could. And he played at Arizona State. And then I, I, I think of him with the Phoenix Suns, but he won a championship with the Celtics in 2008. Richardson checks back in now. He'll be Getting in your screen right there on the free throw line coming up here. For the House Twins, you know, again, being the son of an NBA player is usually enough of a basketball lineage. But let's mention uncle and grandfather as well. Henry Bibby, their grandfather, and Mike Bibby, their uncle. Pretty good lineage, yeah. Yeah, no that's, that's, that's a little bit to pull from there. Ooh. Just a lot of open offense, Greg, in the half court. We saw was we did the 15 under championship, we saw a lot more scheming offensively and set plays. Here it's just kind of a flowing free offense, five out, no post play, which happens a lot in our, our summer basketball action. Tough shot, had to shoot it. Yeah, had to go up, yep. hustle for the loose ball, who touched it last? JL Elite did, it was off of Christian Jones, the hustle by Brennan Peterson to get there in time. This has kind of been played like a conference game, Pete. <laughs> yes. I mean, in terms of how they have defended each other. Missed three. Richardson had position. He got fouled. Won't get the bucket to go, but now he will shoot two. Richardson was offered by Alabama last week. Also has a standing offer from UNLV. Got raked across the left arm there. No pun intended, Greg Rake Straw, but he got raked there. Boy, neither team making a no. free throw, that's for sure, dang it. Jump shots may have already gotten on the plane. These players will later today, but. To me, free throws are the easiest thing in the game. Just takes a lot of practice, a lot of stroking. But missed him. Missed struggling him today, yep. 0 for 4 so far, Arizona Unity from the line. JL Elite, JL 3 Elite with a four point lead, 10 minutes in. The pull from 16. No, but good job to pick up the loose yeah. change. There is a bucket for Walls. And again, 
That's where that height advantage kicks in for I, JL3 Elite. I've been waiting to see Nigel Walls. That's only his second touch of the game in an offensive rebound. He had a post up earlier. Peterson on the drive and had the ball knocked right back to him. He guarded by a 6'10 yeah. player. Well, Walls did a good job staying low, not getting beat off the dribble. McCoy the pull. Good job by House to track it down. Now McCoy in the lane and able to finish. Over the extended reach of Nigel Walls. Good finish there by Brandon. McCoy, his second bucket. The other end, we have a foul. And we have to compliment the array of managers that are here. When there is any sort of player on the floor of perspiration, you see this bolt of light flash across the court. And before you can think about it, said sweat has been wiped up off the floor. Well, they, USA Basketball has put together a tremendous training staff, and they have a ton of people from their headquarters here, obviously with this being their national championships. Well, if you want to get something done, you ask a collegiate basketball manager because they always yeah. know how to find a way. Yeah. I know the Clemson staff is very well represented here today at USA Basketball and in Memphis. One, One. for two yeah. goes Henderson. He is two of four from the line. That's where he's got both of his points. Just a five-point lead. Holmes back in there. Shooting it. He thought about it. He's still thinking about well, it. He made one that I thought was a three earlier. It actually was, a again, it's a high school three, not a college three. It was a two. Put back look does not go for Richardson. And eventually, Henderson will wrestle it out. He'll lead the break. He'll find a teammate. Three for Jones. Got the friendliest of rolls. Oh, God. You would think he was from Memphis and not Katy, Texas, as that one goes down. And kind of like the last game, all of a sudden now, a little space to breathe. It's an eight-point game. Shot blocked oh, by Henderson. Block. Holy cow, great block. Make another pass. Okay, shoot it. Short. Three does <laughs> not go, but great block by Richardson. Great recovery. That was Walls that had it. He was stunned that somebody got to it. But then Pinkins now has six. In the blink of an eye, Pete, it's a 10-point game. It's a double-digit lead, yeah. And again, with, with how much points have been on a premium, it feels like more. Yeah, Arizona Unity just not able to score here. Just very stagnant in the half court. They've taken a few good shots, but most of them. And, and there's a good example. JL3, very active hands. They've made a number of steals. They're cheating off their guys a little bit because Arizona's offense just very lethargic, not getting anything quick. They want to play downhill and towards the rim, but if it's not in transition, JL3 has just stayed in front of the basketball very well. McCoy averaged nine points, five rebounds, and four assists a game. And John Bosco is a high school player this past season. He misses a free throw, then a foul is called. Just the sixth team foul it's gonna against be Arizona Unity. Yeah, Jax Richardson got him. And right now, Arizona Unity 0 for 5 from the line. See both these teams with the EYBL logo on their jerseys. You know, they've been playing against the top level of competition throughout the course of the summer. So you had to earn to get in this tournament. Not everybody got in these championships. You had to earn points, had to win some big tournaments to get here. At the basket, shot is good. That's Pinkins. Pinkins now with eight to lead all scores. Yeah, 24 teams competed in both the ninth grade and 10th grade division. This championship has been held since 2017. The pull does not go. Holmes misses from distance. Now in transition. Three in the corner by Pinkins. Timeout, 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 time 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 And you can tell <laughs> that my partner coached high school basketball <laughs> for 35 years is his inner monologue became his outer voice. And coach agree with you, it's timeout to be taken. A full timeout by Arizona Unity. And partner, it is a 15 point game. Yeah, it's just slipped away. I will tell you, LG3 or JL3 has played wonderful defense. And at the other end, they finally got some transition going where they're getting easy open jumpers. And they're starting to get some mojo offensively there as, as you took a look at them getting to the bench there. And you see their staff working with their players. Well, USA Basketball is the national governing body for basketball in the United States. USA Basketball responsible for the selection, training, and fielding of USA national teams, like, for example, 
example, the FIBA World Cup is coming up very soon. You and I are based in the Indianapolis area, so the fact that Tyrese Halliburton is playing on that team certainly immediately comes to mind. But you have been a part of an event the last couple of years that I think people realize that now in an Olympic year that there's this thing. We always played three on three growing up. The cool kids call it 3X now. You've been a part of the last two years in Springfield, Mass. Colorado Springs, what has that event been like for you? Well, it's wonderfully run and just great competition, great action as they help determine who's going to represent the United States in the Olympics and trying to develop the players, the concepts. You know, it's not easy because the other countries have played it a lot longer at the competition level that the United States has. So, But our women won the gold last Olympics and uh, hopefully the men and women will both have great uh, outcomes next year. Here's Mason McGee, pick and pop. And five out offense, that is the norm these days, especially against oh, yeah. a taller JL3 elite. Square doesn't go. Oh. But the rebound collected by Arizona Unity. Just such just, length on the floor. Yeah, they're just not, they can't get past their defenders. They can't even get underneath their armpits. House. Tough shot, has to take it. More than contested three yeah. that does not go. Shot clock is getting close, had to take it. Jacoby Coleman will track it down. Henderson drives, fouled. And this may be the second consecutive game that you and I do this morning, partner, that will not be in doubt in the second half because I'm not sure Arizona Unity gets it going here. Well, in the intro, I really thought this game was going to be a close one, and it still may be, but right now, Arizona Unity just can't get any baskets to fall. Everything's contested defensively by JL3, and they just don't have any kind of movement. Henderson misses. He's 2 of 5 from the line. He had 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists in the victory yesterday against Pro Skills. That was the quarterfinal win. He's a 50%er at the line. If, if I didn't know him before, 1 and 2, the three times he's been there, 1 and 2. So just look how high they're starting their offense. That's okay if you're trying to play downhill, but. There, they got a much needed basket there. Great drive by Kalik House. Kalik gets his Kalik, first I'm bucket sorry. of the game. Kalik, I said Kalik, my bad. It's quite all right. There's the drive, little continuation. I'll kind of let our much viewers needed. know to some degree how the sausage is made in terms of how we spit factoids at you. There's so much information about the House family and hoops, it takes more than one trip to the free throw line to get it out. So I mentioned dad, I mentioned uncle, I mentioned granddad. How about their older brother, Jalen? Leading scorer at the University of New Mexico. Again, <laughs> a more than talented family. Get a good look at him. And those two, they are playing in this 10th grade championship. They will both be freshmen, or sophomores rather, in high school next year. Okay, that stopped the 10-0 run with a three-point play by Kalik House. There, I got it right. 26-13. Little zone look here by Arizona Unity. Yep, JL3's coach is saying, work the shot clock, get a good shot, don't need to take a quick one right now. A little 2-3 matchup here. Shot clock under 10. Long three, Novin Henderson with the rebound. Uh. It is easy to see why with his athleticism, he is drawing a lot of, of, of big power school attention. House to house, a miss, and a rebound, and a foul will be called against Arizona Unity. So it's free throws at the other end. Pretty good open shot that time. At least they did get an open shot. It wasn't contested. Pretty much the one and done the entire game. Arizona Unity not with very many offensive rebounds. Definitely in the single digits and not very many. JL3's had a couple nice putback opportunities. They played very well here. Once they got their offense going, tied at eight. That was the last time I can remember being tied, Greg. And since then, JL3 has just been the better team in this game. So here's Jacoby Coleman. Misses, and the rebound to Holmes. Oh. 
house able to recollect. Good cut by Richardson. Tip, no. And just such size for this JL3 oh. elite squad. Ooh. I thought that was a double dribble there. Give him credit for a bobble the first okay, time. Yeah, bobble. Okay, muff. There's a lot more leeway on that <laughs> call there used to be. I agree. You can I say agree. that with, with palming or carrying the basketball as well. Deep three, no. Rebound to House. The pull from 15. Got it. Kyle House, he's got five. That now leads Arizona Unity. If you're Arizona Unity, if you can get a stop and a score going to break, you feel like you give yourself a chance at half number two. But getting a stop is awfully yeah, difficult. They didn't get the stop there. When Henderson at 6'6 six, six and 213 gets downhill. Run on the floor, shot block. Henderson got a piece of that. Rebound to JL3 Elite. They can hold nice for pass. one, but why hold when you can go to the bucket and fouls or fouled is Pinkins, and he will shoot two. Yeah, boy, nice job of distributing the ball. You know, you, you tell kids on a fast break to give it up when they can, but you want to make sure, one, you get covered before you make the pass, and two, just the timing to get it to your teammate. That was a real catchable pass. Make good passes. A lot of times on penetration, Greg, teams don't always kick out and get it to the shooting pocket. That slows the process up, and guys don't have open shots then by the time they gather it. So the As bucket is good by Pickens. Pickens makes the first free throw here. Yeah, I'm a little surprised just how this game has gotten away from Arizona Unity, but they have just had nothing has been easy offensive for them. Transition points, two. Two transition points is all I can remember them having. Pinkins with 13, and, and kind of like Hayes in the previous game, not the flashiest guy, just knows where to be, knows where to finish. Holmes got it. Yep. That's about as easy a look in the half court as they've had the entire half. Well, that wasn't really easy. Leaning to his right and shooting with his left. <laughs> okay. It was, but, a, it was but the I know first what you one mean. Yeah. where there was some bit of daylight. There was daylight. I like how him. you said that. There was daylight there. There's some daylight on the scoreboard. JL3 Elite has a 32 17 lead against Arizona Unity. We'll take this break. Second half action comes your way next. It is the 10th grade championship game of the U.S. Open Championships here from Memphis. As you're watching on the USA Basketball YouTube channel. All time leading FIBA World Cup. Diana Taurasi? Uh, Diana Taurasi. Lisa Leslie? Diana? Lisa. Oh, that was gonna be my second one. Lisa Leslie. Is it a guard or a post? Lisa Leslie? Yes. Yo, yeah. let's go. World Cup, Diana. Sue. Yes. Yes. Okay. Brianna Stewart. Sue. Uh, okay. I mean, either Sue or Stewie. Sue. Birdie. Sue and DT have the most like gold medals, right? Sue. Yes. Ah! Yes. Me? We know it's Diana, we know it's Sue, we know it's Stewie. How many more UConn players? <laughs> Swin Cash. Asia Jones. Cynthia Cooper. Tamika Kessins. Cheryl Swoop. Brittany Griner. Aja? Maya Moore? Kara Walters. There it is. Yes. Welcome back here on the USA Basketball YouTube channel. Alongside Pete Smith, Greg Rakestraw with you. 32 to 17 is our score, JL3 Elite. I mean, the offense always hasn't been spectacular. What has been smothering has been their defense, their the athleticism. And, and again, just their want to. That is such a big part of defense. They're winning by 15 because they have absolutely throttled what Arizona Unity wants to do offensively. Well, they're, they're in an elite program and not using that pun in the name JL3 Elite, but they play really good defense. You can tell if you don't have those arms out right. ready to go, you're not going to see the floor for this squad. And 
and nothing has come easy for Arizona Unity. Uh, they haven't really mixed up any offense, quite frankly. I would like to see them do something besides the five out with the handoff and the high post screen because that, that's been very easy for this team to defend. All right, so if you're Arizona Unity, what are you drawing up now? How, how do you do something? Again, you only get five minutes at halftime here. That's why we're back so quickly right. because the second half's about to start. What do you draw up on the whiteboard here with 60 minutes left to play? I, I think you're showing, hopefully, some ways to create better driving opportunities. Um, I, I think they've got to come out and put some kind of pressure defense onto JL3 Elite. You know, in our 15-year-old championship game, the team from Texas did a great job mixing defenses and really kept kept their opponent, you know, off balance. And this one has been the same defense the whole game. Arizona Unity in the red uniforms. Kayla Kaus with five, Cameron Holmes with six. Brandon McCoy, four, Jackson Richardson with two. That's it, that, that adds up to the 17 they have scored so far. For JL3 Elite, Shelton Henderson, seven. Patton Pinkins with 13. Christian Jones, three. Michael Collins, two. Nigel Walls, two. Jacoby Coleman, three. Sebastian Williams Adams with two. As you see some highlights fly by. Only Jamal Creation, the second, has played, but is yet to score for JL3 Elite. So while clearly on the defensive end, if you're David Mullen, Anthony Stevens, head coaches of this JL3 Elite program, that part you've taken care of. Offensively, what can you do better, even knowing you've got a 15-point cushion so far? Well, they started getting some touches to Nigel Walls, and he is a willing passer when he gets it. 6'10", good length, usually commands a double team when the ball comes into him in the post. Um, but just keep sharing the ball. I mean, Pat Pinkins you know, got a nice little run there going. You just mentioned how many points he scored. Shelton Henderson's been a force down to the block. You know, they played very good offense the last, you know, eight to ten minutes of that first half. But it was 8-8. That was the last time I can remember this game being tied. And ever since then, J JL3 Elite has been the elite of this contest. Smile, Pete. You're on candid camera. That entire wonderful answer you put together. Framed by our buddy Alan Hughes. As always, good to work with he and Jordan Shue. And thanks to the... It's not like a, a pilot here, the rest of our Memphis-based crew that are working this game here at the Memphis Sports and Events Center. Again, I can literally see the old flying sauce at the Mid-South Coliseum just out the window, and the Liberty Bowl is just beyond that. University of Memphis, Christian Brothers University, Lemoyne Owen, all within just a handful of miles of our location here just east of downtown Memphis. Uh, and, and a big basketball city. I mean, oh, of course. Oh, absolutely. my gosh, the Grizzlies have just had this city on edge. They've been improving their program every year. Sorry, partner, I'm of the age where when you think Memphis, uh, nothing against the Grizzlies, the grindhouse is tremendous. <laughs> but I, I think of, of Memphis State of the 70s and 80s when I think of basketball here in this community. Yep, the Tigers, the Flying Tigers, boy. Well, here we go. Again, Arizona Unity in red. They trail by 15. Good take. Just couldn't go, but Richardson there to clean it up. Richardson gets his second bucket. Okay. By the way, it was informed by... Well, the staff members USA Basketball, a little inside knowledge. Richardson's getting ready to move to Florida, in fact, actually. So an unfortunate loss for the Bishop Gorman program, but it'll be quite the squad they'll be playing for in Florida coming up this next winter. There's a chance of defense for the Arizona fans that are here. That's going to be a foul against McCoy. McCoy just kind of got his hand in the back that yeah, time. Yeah, he, he was holding him, yeah. On Richardson. Yeah, just had it wrapped around a little bit. Well, coming out of the halftime break, it was obviously they wanted Cameron Holmes to get the ball in his hands, this Arizona Unity team. Though he missed the shot, he did uh, allow them to score. There's the big man we were talking about, Nigel Walls. There's the touch I was talking yeah. about, too. Get him a touch early. If you hit that move from 10 feet, you're going to be playing for whatever college you want to play at that length that he has. He certainly got his fair share of offers. Arkansas, Auburn, New Mexico, TCU amongst others. Drive down the lane and again, it's not coming easy, but still it's, it's, it's buckets in succession now. Fair Arizona Unity. Good find in the corner, not that time. Back for the loose ball, tracked down by Richardson. Holmes in the way, off the window, no, but did get bumped, and he'll shoot two. Well, transition, transition, transition. They're finally getting an opportunity to run the floor and play downhill towards the rim. Good job there. 
on the missed shot. They ran the floor really, really well. Some free throws coming up for Holt. That's good. He's got seven. Free throws a problem in the first half for Arizona Unity. And our final broadcast of the day here on USA Basketball. We'll be back with you on Monday for the women's equivalent championships in ninth and 10th grade. Okay, good zone now right now being played by Arizona Unity. We'll see how good it is. And the shot ah. is good by Williams Adams. I got him down to Sebastian Adams. Don't know if he goes by a nickname Sebastian, but William may be his real name on the roster. So he got the bucket to go. He's got four. On the drive, Nigel Walls is fouled. He'll shoot two. We've solved the mystery. It's William. Adams, Sebastian William Adams, thank you. And he is ranked number 29 yeah. on 24-7 sports. Sebastian ranked number one in Texas in his class. I thought it was Walls that was fouled. My apologies. Yeah, no. yeah. Jacoby Coleman that will go to the line. Coleman from Plano, Texas. North suburb of Dallas. Liberty High School. Okay, a little basketball case study now. How early do you take guys off the line? You've left your teammate there to shoot a free throw. I'm not, not picking sides, Jacoby Coleman on the line, but JL3 Elite decides to take both guys down. You never know you can get a cheap rebound on a miss there. He makes the second. Just a little case study in basketball. When do you take the guys off the line and let just one guy be there on your team to shoot it? House on the drive. Kalik House got it to go. <laughs> He's got seven. And now a stop as well as steal. So far that zone has really been effective. Throw it up top Dunkey. and throw it down for McCoy. Thank you very much, McCoy. McCoy, UCLA, Arizona State, Cal amongst those, University of Louisville. And look at the player that will be just a sophomore in high school next year. 2-3 two, two, zone just seems to have JB or, or JL3 just standing, making lazy passes. What it's also leading to is transition buckets. You said it's got to happen for Arizona Unity. It has, and here we are, partner, single digits. Yeah, I would, it's a nine-point game. Yeah, I would probably consider taking a timeout just to see if draw up a little bit better zone offense or make it a little bit sharper. Well, that you, helps. You can also <laughs> just knock down a jumper, and now here comes the timeout. Yep, there's the timeout. Yep. You know, it reminds me of of a line from baseball where they'll tell you momentum is the next day starting pitcher. <laughs> momentum in basketball is often do you simply make a jump shot and just basic fundamental, square it up, catch, up in motion, and Coleman knocks down his second three of the ball game. Well, and they had, they turned it over the last two times against that zone just with sloppy passing, just, just not sharp passing. Drives coaches crazy. And Good time out there after getting that lead back up to double digits at 12. They were, had cut it to nine, Arizona Unity had. And you know, the thing is, how long can they stay in that zone with a shot clock? You can waste some time, but you know, you're down 12 points, double digits. You're not getting a lot of transition buckets. They got a few here to start the third quarter, or the second half, I should say. But not a lot since. Already for Arizona Unity, they have scored 11 points in the first three minutes and 20 seconds <laughs> after scoring 17 in the first 16 minutes. And they keep that up. Tough shot. McCoy oh, bailed him out. Got fouled. Krayshawn with the foul, just, yeah. Yep, just with the foul, yeah. So McCoy will shoot two. I mentioned most of the schools that are recruiting him at this point. Not all. They left that one short. And this one may come down to free throws for Arizona Unity. Take a look at the contact that drew the foul. 
and makes one of two. So the boys got seven. Okay, full court press, one, two, two, full court pressure. Trying to get a 10 second count. Creation for three, not that time, but ah. Walls using that size and finishes. Yeah, I'd like to see him get more touches just because I like to see what he what his decision making is when he gets the ball there. Good offensive rebound there. Problem is in a press, and gonna go back to the line for two more. It's gonna be McCoy. Problem with the press, Greg, is is it takes you out of rebounding positions if they do shoot a quick shot. Your guys have to really make a hard effort to get your rear ends back and, and block out. Rear ends back and, you know, into the lane to block out. Well, what you're seeing from Arizona Unity, we talked about it, getting in transition, trying to pick up some steals. They found a way to get to the rim every time down, and that was not happening right. at half number one. No, the length and the just defensive athleticism, JL3 possessed that first half. Dug the big hole, the 15-point halftime deficit. <laughs> Waiting for a lane violation call. Yep, it'll happen. So one more shot. Yeah, we had someone prematurely go in the lane, and and McCoy was waiting. Do I still shoot it, or do you know? And yeah, you still get the opportunity to shoot it. If you don't make it, you get to shoot it again. Connects on that one. He's okay, got one, nine. One, two, two. McGee and Caden House currently out of the lineup for Arizona Unity. They will check back in next stoppage in play. Falling back to a two, three. So they didn't get the 10 second count. They really didn't put any hard traps on. Just wanted to see if JL3 would get lazy with the basketball. They didn't that time. Deep three. No problem, Pinkins. Perhaps Steph Curry has forever changed what we call deep threes at this point. Seems like anything across half court is now in range. Peterson for three. Brandon Peterson gets his first bucket to go. Well, he came off ready to shoot that on that right baseline. Okay, soft press again. One, two, two. About seven seconds before they got it across. You get ten. All tipped away. Holmes pulls up just before the scorer's table. That got everybody's attention here along press row. <laughs> Holmes is going to break. Kalik House is going to breather as well. Again, just seven man roster. Nine of the roster, two players injured. Couldn't be here for Arizona Unity. Another long distance dedication Yeesh. that goes. There's in the gym range and there's in the town range. Both of those on display by Christian Joe. Yeah, I'd still rather stay in that zone as long as I can when I'm in striking range and see if they can make a long range shot like that. Yeah, if somebody's gonna beat you with 30 yeah. footers, I'm not sure there's much you can do. No. On the drive, the bucket is good by McCoy. He's now getting going. He's got 11 yeah. and Unity has already bested what they scored in the first half here in half number two. Three on one. They'll throw it up top. Oh. Great job by Jones Yep, though. Jones got both hands up. But then he lost it. Peterson, Richardson, bucket. Richardson with six. 10 point game. All alone for three in the baseline corner does not go. This is starting to speed up JL3 elite a little bit. Chance to make it single digits again. House. Ball movement crisp for Arizona Unity. Take to the bucket. Foul is called again. Wave off the flush. Foul on the first shot. Free throws coming up. I could see where Mapir Maker is tough to shoot over <laughs> for Arizona Unity because from our broadcast location when Mapir is doing what he should be doing and being a good teammate, I've got to see over seven foot one to see the action. You know, I'm watching the monitor an awful lot <laughs> when they have the ball down at their end because I just can't see between their coaching staff and, and Maber, wow. I, I will not play the role of an official and give him the wave down. I'm all for being a good teammate and standing up. I'll figure out a way to work around it. McCoy has seemingly figured out his issues from the free throw line as he's starting to knock him down with more regularity. 
<laughs> of course, up at the broadcast yeah. checks. Right on him. I'm sorry, young man. <laughs> My fault. Okay, they're jumping right into the one-two on yep. the miss, which is not it, easy to do. It's working, though. It's what, what they have to do yeah. to get back in the game. They're back in it now. Can they keep this momentum going? Yeah, got it back to single digits. Down 15 at half. Offense is almost exclusively outside the arc for JL3 Elite. Now they get an elbow touch, and that doesn't go. That was Henderson. Three for Peterson. Got it. Two in a row from that dead corner and on the right a, side. And it is a six-point game. Momentary stop because the net got caught up on the rim. Peterson using all the real estate of the court. Great job to show that his toes were down, his heels were up above that sideline. Almost a steal. It is. It is a steal. It will be. It could be Arizona, Arizona be, basketball, foul, yeah. But it will be Arizona Unity basketball. Arizona Unity basketball there. Boy, the good job by, they're just doing a really good job with that half court, three quarter court, one, two, two, full court pressure. And there you, you there, she is Johnny on the spot with any kind of moisture on the floor. Doing a great job. No problem getting her steps in the day. <laughs> All over no. it. Offensive foul to get free from the screen. So Peterson called for the offensive foul. What happened so quick? My guess is he used his hands a little bit too much on that screen. Deep three again. And again, you make a couple That's of those, turns into fool's gold. Yeah, turns into fool's gold. I was going to say the same thing. They have been settling for nothing but threes. Peterson will pull, hit the floater. Boy, has he picked it up all eight points here in the second half. How about that young man? Four point game now, a rare break down to the press as Collins gets his second basket. And now JL3 Elite will ask for time. Well, good job by JL3 of getting the ball out of the basket and beating, beating Arizona Unity down the floor before they could get that press set up because this really played havoc with them, causing this game to be much closer than we we uh, were thinking it may be the second half. Good job by this Arizona Unity team to fight back and hang in there. Pete has mentioned this, but these are teams that earned their way into this championship. Just 24 teams invited in both the ninth grade and 10th grade divisions. 16 teams in the championship bracket. Arizona Unity lost their opening game. They have won their last five and it's the last three that took them from the round of 16 to this championship contest jl3 elite has not lost they have won every game and only a couple have been by single digits the power five by three the dc premier by five on monday they have won by as many as 23 and they were leading by double digits for a good chunk of this game that is now down to a six point lead. Now JL3 Elite going to put on their 1-2-2. Two, two. First time we've seen them press in the contest. Peterson breaks it easily. And they're going to fall back into a 2-3 zone. Head safe. They matched with the cutter, which they did. Almost a 1-2-2 two, two zone now, actually. They're just matched with the spots on the floor. Zone defense. Holmes will fire and miss it. Shot clock was in single digits. Ball finds Peterson. He made his last two for the baseline corner. Could not make that one. Ooh. Two and done that time for Arizona Unity. Williams Adams, the target, but taken away. Good read by House. House going 84 feet. Blocked by Henderson. Look ahead pass. Again, big runs to the floor. You reward him. Good bucket and a foul for Sebastian Williams Adams. Reward the big man for running the floor here. First, there's the block. Good block. And Good there you see the by finish. Michael yeah. Collins. Yeah, very nice pass by Michael Collins. A good spacing on the floor. You want to get about 10 foot spacing on a fast break on your two wings at least. You got to spread that defense out and make the defender guard either you if you have the ball 
or when they do guard you to have that 10 foot outlet pass for the guy trailing for the layup and shot there. Williams Adams a miss from the free throw lot. Both teams extending yeah. their pressure to the three quarter court. And the 30 second shot clock era, I'm a big fan of that. Shot left short, Henderson, jump ball. And the arrow will go to JL3 Elite. I have these philosophical conversations with my partners in college basketball a lot. I'd play at least 2-2-1 two, two, or 1-2-2 two, two, almost every possession just to slow you down, not to speed you up, to slow you down to give you less time to get in your right. half-court set. I'd like that, too. Good skip pass, middle's open. Henderson squares, got shot blocked. That was House that got hand on ball. Weaving through traffic. Williams Adams affected the shot. Henderson the rebound. Now it's get up and go. 3v2. Peterson with his hand in the cookie jar. Let's yeah. see if it's on the floor or on the shot. On the floor. On the floor, the yep. On the floor. Just the fifth team foul, so. No free throws coming up just yet. McCoy will check back in. Peterson will check out and gets a nice round of applause from the coaching staff as they exit. We got people standing in a ring kind of two or three deep around this court for the 10th grade championship. Oh, there's games on the 15 other courts also. Just basketball hoop heaven here in Memphis at the Sports and Event Center here. Deep three again, no. But this time the weak side glass collected by Coleman. He traveled oh, he did, for it, yeah. went up with it. Sands of the hourglass starting to fly through a little bit. Well, still only an eight point deficit, plenty of time. They just need to, they've not been able to keep a constant flow offensively. Playing downhill, there's the lob. Throw it up top, and House never could collect it. On the drive, scoop and score. Great body control by Pinkins. To, and he uses his body to shield the defender, yeah, and he's exactly. at 18. Yeah, he, that, that was the reverse finger roll because he used that shoulders to allow it not to be blocked. Deep three, no. Long a rebound. Collected by Kalick House. I think you're going to call Henderson on a reach. 15 foul against JL3 Elite. Yeah, there's Shelton Henderson right there. Okay, JL, yep. On the oh. drive, put it down. McCoy with the flush. That was not very good defense by, by JL3 there. Let him step through the center of that zone and get the easy slam dunk foul really quick at the other end. but. Hanging in there at eight point lead. Let's take a look at the replay. Center guy Pickens just did not. Actually, look around. He, he was kind of shocked the ball was in play that fast. So he was flat footed, and the result was a slam dunk. Step up to a three. That does not go. Pinkins just stepped back in for the out of bounds pass. Just couldn't finish. He's got 18 to lead all scores. At the other end, Richardson. Lays it up and in. Yeah, Jackson's been kind of quiet this second half. We called his name a lot in the first. He's got eight. Two three zone. Just gonna live and die on that three. They're hoping. JL3 just lives and dies on it. Right now they're dying. They have a chance to cut to four or three with the three. Good pick up by JL3. Find in the corner, Holmes making a one possession game. Doesn't go, and now the look ahead pass, and Pinkins a one on none, just casually slams it home. I like his game, Pete. Oh, I do too. You can, I, tell, you can tell he's a coach's kid. He yeah. knows exactly where to be. Oh, foul. Yeah, JL3 does not need fouls right now. The clock is on their side. Keep it running, get back on defense. Just the 16 foul. See Caden House there. Caden ha has not had a lot of touches. He just missed that alley-oop two possessions ago. Not a lot of touches offensively. 
opportunities to score. Waiting for a player to tuck in a jersey. Hence the momentary delay. C kind of parts from McCoy and yeah. missed a bunny. Got to make that if you're going to get back in this. You're in it, but if you're going to have a chance. Henderson. Got deflected. Williams Adams, foul. And we'll, we'll see two free throws coming up, but I think the issue isn't, isn't the block call here. It's the uh, whatever that was that Henderson was doing that well, in the officials, get away with. In the officials' eyes, know. they thought there was you know deflection. There was a, a touch of the ball, which allows them then to go ahead and get the possession back and keep the basketball, and that's what he's explaining to them right now. <laughs> Williams Adams collects. He's got seven. In Houston, Kansas, K State, LSU, Texas, AM, Rice amongst those that are looking at the 6'8 junior to be at St. John's School. Goes one for two. But a foul going to be called against JL3 Elite the other direction. I think they're going to call it Christian Jones. For yep. The hold. So that gives a stoppage of play and gives them a chance to get a couple points without having to burn any time on the clock here. Nigel Walls will check back in. I want to thank Jordan Shu as well as Alan Hughes and the rest of our ISC Sports Network crew producing today's game. We'll all reconvene here on Monday when the women's championships for ninth grade and 10th grade take place. Throw made by Richardson. Okay, I would expect uh, as Arizona you to get into a press right away if he knocks a shot in, even if he doesn't knock it in. Loose ball, eventually <laughs> tracked down by JL3 Elite. Throw it up top. Good collection. A great collection. Pinkins with 22. Pinkins wanted to slam it, but he knew the pass wasn't on the mark enough to do it. Had the composure to pull it back down and go back up with it. And now for the first time in a little bit, it's back to a double-digit lead. Took a lot of energy for Arizona Unity with a seven-man roster to kind of climb the mountain. And House, good block to block pass, blocked by Pinkins, recovery, and House scores. Caden House gets the bucket. And a timeout called by Arizona Unity. So it's an eight-point game with 419 left to go. Well, Pete, overall, kind of your thoughts on the talent that we have seen in these two eight, or class division championships today. The, the talent has been tremendous. The, the quickness and intensity has been very, very good. Both teams have played rather hard. i got to say, JL3 Elite in this game has got all the loose balls, what I call the 50-50 balls, where they could go any way. And that's been just enough right now for them to keep this 8 to 10 point lead the majority of the second half. That being said, Arizona Unity still has time with 419 to go. They're going to jump into a press right away. I'm, I'm looking into their huddle as I'm talking and, and just watching what they're trying to tell their players to do right now. But they've got fouls to get. Well, they don't have fouls to get, but anytime they can get the clock stopped, it's going to benefit them from the fact that they're going to have time to score. The gentleman we just showed you up there above the scoreboard, that is our buddy Matt Holmes. He is here on behalf of the NCAA. Matt has worked with our crew before because and you and I are based in the Indianapolis area. And Matt with the NCAA hey, being I got him in waving Indianapolis. To us. <laughs> Matt and I both are graduates of the University of Indianapolis, and Matt has been known to fill in a time for two on me for me on uh, – some of the broadcasts we do on our production company that's producing these games on the ISC Sports Network. It was wonderful to see him and catch him before today's game. Okay, big moment here. Timeout, 419 to go. They're going to change defense. They're going to play man-to-man -man full court pressure, and they're not going to guard the ball. So they're going to double the point guard, try not to let him get it. He does eventually get it. They should set it up. Nope. I thought they were going to probably trap on the first Henderson went yep. line, but okay. he's all right. Jones in traffic, tough shot. And then House wrestles it away. The press won that time because he got Jones to take a really quick shot. 
because he beat the press. He thought, boy, okay, and he never got his composure. Now let's see if it pays off for Arizona Unity with a good shot. On the take, McCoy, well done. McCoy with 16. Okay, again, man pressure, no traps yet. Just trying to get them out of their offense here by guarding them full court. See if they can take a bad shot. It worked last possession. Six-point game. The pull from 15. Bad shot, yep. bad shot. Again, full court pressure, picking it up defensively. Here comes Unity. Down the lane, got it. Four-point game. Cameron Holmes, the bucket, he's got nine. And four is as close as Unity is when they got here one other time. Four has been as close as they have been through the contest. Two bad decisions offensively by JL3 Elite. And we got a ball game, folks. The pull, got it. And there have been some tough shots that have bailed out. JL3 Elite, that's one of them. I'm not going to say it's a bad shot because it went in. That's the only reason why I'm not saying it. When you don't get anybody else to touch it but you, the whole possession, not sure that's a good shot. But he made it, and great players make shots like that. Back to a six-point game. Holmes from the free throw line. Peterson, he's made a couple of those. He's made another, a three. He's got 11 points all the second half. It is a one-score game. Closest it's been, Greg, since about maybe eight minutes to go in the first half. Drive and kick. Pinkett's up and Ooh, under. Good step through. No. Good look, it wouldn't go. And that will be oh, a, and foul, a foul, which means free throws at the other end. One plus the bonus coming up. Well, you got to give credit to Arizona Unity. They've been really sluggish and lethargic. And, boy, the pressure has really caused JL3 to jumpstart them on offense. Big shout-out to Brennan Peterson. Has 11 points here in the second half. You see him right there. He's had a wonderful second half for the Arizona Unity team. Free throw, good. House has been somewhat quiet. I did score in the first half. Kalik with nine, Caden with three. And a chance to make this a one point game. How about that? Man, he thought he missed it. <laughs> well, I he, thought he was he, almost over the line he, before he, he, he went was through chasing the net. it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I got an anchor. Oh, I got a wet spot. Yep. Hence the reason for the delay. Want to make sure uh, all precautions are taken. Okay, full court pressure on the side. Sometimes that could be even more difficult to get the ball in bounds if they denied it. Okay, decision, shot selection, decision here. What's it going to be? Turnover. Taken away. Chance for Arizona Unit to go in front. Peterson oh leaves my. it. Richardson dunks it. Arizona is in the lead, Greg. First lead of the second half. On the drive, Williams Adams got it right back. Boy. There have been some degree of difficulty shots for JL3 Elite <laughs> in this game today. But Arizona Unity trailed by nearly 20 points. Great find by Peterson. Richardson now with 11. Yeah, arguably the shortest player on the floor, at least for Arizona Unity, that is. Brennan Richardson has played big this second half. Both teams, by the way, just have one timeout remaining with a minute 38 left to play. Now this is more like the intro I said. I mean, I thought this was going to be a really competitive, good game. They'd won 11 of the 12 games they played this week. Got away from Arizona for a while, but, boy, they went to their full court pressure and half court traps a little bit and is really... Shut down this JL3 elite team. So Arizona Unity will bring the ball the length of the floor. We will have the championship trophy presentation. Players from both sides will get medals for 
making the championship game of the 10th grade division. Okay, so JL3 is going to go with full court pressure, just token. Just token, come down and make, show it, and then go it, kind of. Show and go. See what they drew out of the timeout here. High post screen in the center. Nope. Denied it. Shot clock at 17. Holmes in a tough spot. You may want to call a timeout here. You're not going to get the shot you're going to get. I know they only have one, but big possession here. McCoy, the step back, no. Yeah. Pinkins, the rebound. Now they got to do something defensively. Arizona, that is. JL3 elite with the ball. Williams Adams. Good find. Good take. Henderson blocked. Clean block by House. 2v1. Four Holmes on one. races back. Scores it. Holmes with 11, and it's back to a one point lead for Arizona Unity. Williams Adams, what a move. Oh my goodness. <laughs> At that size? Come on. <laughs> You're not supposed to be able to stop like that that quickly when you're that big. Wow. He's got 11 as well, 65 to 64. All of a sudden, this has gotten interesting down the stretch. McCoy takes the bump off the window. Ooh, no, but that's going to be a goal ten. Yep. Ball was knocked out of I the cylinder. I think we'll see what. So good yep. bucket. Yep. Good bucket for McCoy. You and I both saw it. I'm not sure everybody could see, but we had a great angle. See, that ball was still in the cylinder. And we will see it because our cameras are everywhere. Ball was knocked away as it was, again, in the cylinder. Yep. There was contact okay. with the net, and that's enough. No, okay, that was it. Okay. Ball was in the cylinder and the net contact. There you go. 66-65. Two-three zone. They're willing to give up a long three and not an inside shot. There's the three. You want a three, Pinkins will give it to you. Missed it. Ball tipped away. Jones able to track it down. Extra pass. Williams Adams got fouled. Jump ball. No, jump ball. Jump ball. And the arrow points to Arizona Unity. Clean block. Yep. Okay. Quick steal or a foul right now if you're JEL three elite. And now. You have the option of advancing the ball here. And so let's see if they if they take advantage of this. Arizona Unity will take their, their last time out. And again, great job by both Jackson Richardson and our camera crew because <laughs> we, we had the view from behind the play. Right. But clearly that view was correct. Had nothing but basketball did Richardson. Yep. So yep. final timeout for Arizona Unity. One more rating for JL3 Elite. And already before that timeout was being called, coaching staff for JL3 said, hey, foul here. In other words, they don't, they don't feel they got time for the trap. They will foul. There's another good look at it. Richardson flies over. Have all spot on. ball. Spot on. Super call there. Yep. And, and again, as we reference, yep. you, you could advance the ball. So instead of having to bring it length of the court, they will advance the ball into the half court. See if they break someone back in the backcourt. The danger is a steal. The other thing is, though, it does get you more time kill, more yep. space. Yep. Yep, that's what they tried to do. The first option was that. They got a foul real quick. They did. So eight tenths of a second come off the clock on the foul. It is one plus the bonus. 19 foul for JL3 Elite. And so McCoy, it is made more than he has missed, but he's missed a couple. He'll have one plus the bonus trying to ice the game. Now, JL3 Elite, if there is a miss here, can again take a timeout and advance the ball and shorten this. Even on a make, they can take a timeout if they so choose. Missed it. Rebound, timeout. There you go. And so now they will move the ball. And obviously with, are they going to call a foul first? I think it's a time, are they going to call a foul? But it's oh, they've got foul, a foul. Yeah. Okay. A foul. Oh, my. Yep. Oh, my. That and, was ill-advised. Well, Amelia House taps the chest as my fault. He lost track of time and score, and he was going for the foul. And so forget the timeout. Now it's one plus the bonus. Well. One to tie it, two to potentially go in front for Shelton Henderson. This strangely may work out if Henderson Correct. doesn't make the free Correct. throws. One plus. The crowd continues to grow. No problem for Henderson. Oh. And again, Arizona Unity is out of timeouts, so they can advance the ball here. Yeah. 
Henderson simply asked yeah. for a towel to kind of wipe some of the perspiration off his hands. So the potential winner right here. Makes it. Got calmly. it. Calmly. Oh, they. No, JL Elite does not want a timeout. No. They, they, they don't want to give Unity the free timeout. They don't, but this kind of helps them set up their defense yep. a little bit more. An inadvertent whistle. I, you know, the official thought he wanted the timeout because he called it on the foul at the other end. Here we go. Hand off to Holmes. Holmes rides and links the floor. Holmes off the window. Does not go. And JL3 Elite Jeez. survives <laughs> and wins the 10th grade championship of the U.S. Open. Tremendous comeback by Arizona Unity. They get a bit of a break. This JL3 Elite late. And how about Shelton Anderson calmly hitting two free throws to help win a championship. And that ball just a little bit strong from Cameron Holmes. Great battle by the young men from Arizona. The JL3 Elite wins your 10th grade division. Pete, your thoughts on this one? Well, Sebastian William Abbs did a great job of not fouling there, but that's as hard as you can contest without fouling. It was a shot he had her to take. What a great comeback by Arizona Unity. JL3 Elite, 15 point halftime lead, but Arizona Unity outscored him 49 to 35 to get in this position to have a shot to win the game. There are multiple players that are gonna, at some point, a couple of years from now, maybe three, play major college basketball out of, out of both of these teams. But I, I was very impressed by Henderson, by Pinkins, by Williams Adams. This is a really wonderfully talented team and very much a deserving champion here of the 10th grade boys division. Yeah, they, they I tell you, they, they played Super defense the first half, holding this Arizona team to 17 points. Second half, Arizona got their transition going through putting on pressure defense, both full court and half court. They got better shots, and it came down to the last shot. Uh, again, one more shout out to Brendan Peterson, who was a big spark for this Arizona team in the second half, but just super play by Pinkins, Williams Adams, just a lot of guys really stepping up for JL3 for the victory. Some of the scoring in this game, again, Richardson fi or Anderson finished with nine. Pinkins a game high, 22. Christian Jones would add nine points of his own. Michael Collins, four. Nigel Wall, six. Colby Coleman, seven. And Sebastian Williams Adams with 11 for the winners from JL3 Elite. Partner, let's do this again in four days, shall we? We will, back here at the beautiful Memphis Sport and Event Center. We will be here for the women's division, the ninth and 10th graders, coming up on Monday morning. Be sure you join us then. For Pete Smith and our entire ISC Sports Network crew, this is Greg Regstraw. Goodbye from Memphis, and thanks for joining us for the U.S. Open Basketball Championships on USA Basketball's YouTube.